All right. So, this is quite a while then uh, since I've done my last stream. Quite a while ago that I've done one. So I hope I'm still possible to to do it. I don't know. Hello, welcome to a new stream. Um, this is a rather special one today. I can monetize streams. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, good. Yeah, okay, it seems like I can monetize streams. Uh, hello. Um, again, this is totally unprepared. I am uh, doing a stream today. It's, it's, it's actually a new video? Why rate what my Discord says? It's a new video. Why is it a new video if it's a stream? <laughs> Interesting. Just see well, how, how this looks on Discord quickly. Uh, what happens if I open that up? Then it's actually a stream. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it seems like this is all working. Hello. Um, welcome to the stream. Uh, I want to try out if I can do some music here. I hope it's not too loud. For me, it's a bit too loud. Probably not for you because it's already uh, mixed here in um, thing. Oh yeah, my my uh, my antivirus software says that I have ransomware in my system. Yes, I got through two ransomware uh, attacks this month, but this was all self-written software that were just happening to do some disk I/O that was, was seems suspicious. <laughs> But yeah, um, this is going to be a nice stream. I hope that everything works. I'm going to let the music play a bit, pause it and see if I... System. Yes, I got through two ransomware uh, attacks this month, but this was all self-written software that we're just happening to do something. Okay, so it seems like this is working with the audio. Maybe it's even a bit too quiet. So if you have any problems with the, the audio, let me know. Hello, welcome to uh, the stream. Uh, presence. So what are we going to do in the stream today? Well, in today's stream, I want to do some audio programming, actually. The thing is, I am a guy that always does uh, some Halloween parties. And in my Halloween parties, I always dress up the whole the whole room and I play sensors around. And if you can have, like walk by a sensor, some sounds play and you get a jump scare and things like that. And what I want to do is I want to write... Um, a bit of a software that does uh, audio automation. So basically, I want to define multiple audio channels, play background tracks on all channels, uh, on all uh, yeah, kind of like uh, channels, and play sound effects on several channels. And yeah, basically, I want to write a multimedia audio system. Now, if you're writing multimedia, you're of course going to have interaction with a uh, proper system. So with a proper uh, hardware system. And what I want to use is the hardware system that interacts with... Um, uh, with the kind of like computer program is I want to use a PLC for that. Um, we're going to dive in and start with the PLC programming actually today. Um, I do just want to quickly set this all up and be able to kind of like receive a press of a button on uh, the computer. So I have a PLC set up back there. You can't see my, my hand. Yeah, no, you can't see it, but I was looking at the wrong screen. Um, why am I so low? What's, what's happening with the camera? Come on, NVIDIA. There we go. All right, so what I basically want to do is I want to press a button and then some audio effects shall, shall play. And that's what we want to do. Press a button, audio plays. So how do we do stuff like that? Well, first of all, I'm going to show you my setup that I'm running. Of course, now this is gone. Yeah, there we go. This is the setup that I have. Uh, that's uh, kind of like controlling everything. Um, I can open this up. You can see this is kind of like a control cabinet that I've built way ago when I started my like 2019 or some time back I built that thing so it's not 100% correct uh, but I'm gonna probably do some hardware changes later on uh, onto that thing but this is kind of like the current state of uh, of my control cabinet um, this is a PLC here uh, on the left that big thing that has this bright screen that nobody can see because it's too bright and the camera didn't pick it up correctly and the power supply and this um, this is basically like a programming device. You can program it, and it 
it, it does industrial automation. So it's a PLC programming logical controller. And what I have here on the right, because this PLC is quite expensive, I have some IO devices that I've bought on eBay. This is a IO device that uh, where you can basically connect buttons. And what I've connected to it were these buttons at the side of the uh, of the control cabinet. So I have a few buttons here. And the general idea is you can um, yeah kind of like write an application, and if you're pressing the button, it kind of like went screen and it's kind of like ready to do to do its job and that's what we want to do today we want to um yeah maybe add a bit of functionality to that and then we want to be able to pick up some control signals on the computer so i want to write a c plus plus application that kind of like provides some meta information for the plc and the plc basically um yeah kind of like catches an io a press a sensor and um, then the computer can react to that and the computer does uh, kind of like tell the plc what to do and that's what we want to prepare and i want to start with the plc programming i've already uh, set it up everything this is the uh, unspecified cpu and um, what we can do is we can detect the plc that's currently connected to that um, uh, and I can select the, the interface here and this is the network and then I can like have like press start search and it now tries to detect the PLC on the network and uh, it, it should find one. Um, it's, it's now reloading, it's, it's taking quite a time. You can see this is the PLC that was uh, detected and that's basically the PLC that I wanna wanna do. Come on, why can I not select it? Why, why can I not select this PLC? Normally you... Why are you not... Ah, now there it goes. Now I can click detect. And it now uh, does take a bit of setup to, to kind of like uh, detect the PLC and then we can start writing it. Um, okay. And now the PLC should pop up here so that everything is connected correctly. Now this is the PLC that I'm using. And what I want to do is, and I want to go in and do a bit of uh, reconfiguration because I've changed my home network quite a while ago. And uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that the PLC gets uh, a yeah, proper IP address because these were back in the days where I had an idea on how IP addresses works. Uh, so the PLC is going to get the IP address 10. What did I select for that? 222 zero and since it's the plc it's going to get the number of 10. one is going to be my computer and 10 is going to be the plc uh, okay PL profinet device name what i want to name is, is I also all, i also want to rename the profinet name of that plc however i want to start slowly not ip addresses configured and i was first want to make sure that the um uh, yeah, that I basically go uh, go in and select everything. Now, this PLC can do failsafe, but we are not going to use the failsafe here. You can see it's all disabled currently. Um, we don't need it. We don't need um, failsafe yet. Um, all right, so this is everything that we need for now. I just want to make sure that it's getting the correct configurations. Let me quickly rename this one. It's not called PLC1. This shall be called... Uh, IL controller. That's how I want to call it because the shell interact, the shell interact as an IO controller with our computer and in our C++ application, we want to um, access that controller. We're gonna prototype everything with Python first, especially with the like the Modbus communication before we're gonna move to C++. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to quickly make sure to load the uh, PLC. So this is all set up correctly. Let's first start and by loading the PLC, it should automatically change its uh, IP address. So we're going to select the old one and I'm going to click select load. And then it should probably, uh, it should reconfigure the PLC um, with the new IP address. Yeah. I can see um, it has added the new IP address of the PLC and now it should go into the mode of loading it. I hope. Okay. Uh, compile before downloading to device. Yeah, okay, but why do you not do that? You, okay, then I'm gonna compile first. It's not a problem. Then load. It should probably still have the old address, right? Yeah, it has the old address still, but.
it has some problem. Password must not be empty. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, because this is a fail-safe PLC. Um, it wants to have a password for the fail-safe. Alright. That's, that's a problem. Now it should work. And now it should be able to, to work. Um, yeah, this is actually what I've learned. This is uh, my, also my new daytime job. I haven't like made an information on why I uh, did not do many videos these days, but actually there were quite a few things going on. First, I, um, I'm currently in the process of the last months of writing my bachelor thesis. Then I'm also in the process of getting a new daytime job. Actually, this process of getting a new daytime job has been finished. I'm actually getting a new job now. And yeah, then also when everything was done, my monitor broke, my, my PC monitor, and I wasn't able to do records, and I need to rearrange everything and get an old monitor ready for action. And it was a bit of a, a bit of a problem. What is the problem here? Yeah, okay. That's, I want to confirm that basically what we are doing, this is a failsafe PLC and I'm downgrading it to a non-failsafe PLC program. And I can do that by confirming. And now it's going to get the whole new hardware configuration and then uh, we're going to add the uh, other I.O. devices to it to basically try out all the features that we need and then everything should be fine. When the load is done, I actually want to quickly... Uh, Okay, um, there's currently a password set it up. Uh, probably uh, the password that I've entered is wrong. Because currently there's a failsafe program on here. No, it's not wrong. I was able to... Okay, then I uh, provided the same password. <laughs> Uh, what is this? This is actually a PLC programming environment because what I want to do today is uh, PLC programming and C++ programming. The idea is that I have, maybe I can quickly show this again, I have uh, a control cabinet here at my home and I have a PLC in here and the PLC is basically controlling like industrial 24 volt IOs like sensors and uh, relays and stuff that I've set it up around for Halloween and on Halloween I want to basically detect if somebody moves through the row or to through the room and then I want to play sounds and I want to play a multimedia stuff and the multimedia stuff shall come from the computer and all of the IO shall be controlled by this PLC and I'm currently configuring the PLC so that I can kind of like control it from my C++ application so that's the idea and this is tier portal this is a application where you can administrate a, a PLC and program a PLC now what I'm gonna currently trying is I'm, I'm trying to go like online um, and I'm going to go into online diagnosis now. And what I want to do in the online diagnosis is I want to quickly... Uh, okay, the connection uh, failed. Let's let's reconnect. Let's hope that everything is correctly. I want to quickly show if my IP address has been uh, correctly set it up. Yeah, you can see now my IP address of the PLC is matching. And now what I want to do is, um, is I want to go into control panel and make sure that my uh, network adapter is actually in the same, um, in the same, uh, in the same network. So network and sharing center. And I want to change the adapter settings. This is my home network. That's not what I want to check. This is my utility network currently. I want to make basically sure that they are in the same network. But you're going to get the IP address one. Now we are in the same like networks. That's important. Um, because I want to basically make a Modbus server here. And now what I want to do is I want to quickly create a Python Modbus server or like Modbus Master. There's, I think, a Modbus Master uh, Simulator. There is a, I think, an application that you can use. This supports easy connection to a Modbus Slave device. Now I want to have a Modbus Slave simulator there is like a simulator or oh, i'm gonna write that quickly in um i'm gonna write this quickly in python but i think it's better to uh it's better to use like the simulator but i think this is no this is the wrong one this is like paid this thing i uh... 
No problem. Um, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I am really glad to help you. And if you have any more questions, you can of course ask them in the comments or on Discord. So yeah, I really appreciate you uh, watching my tutorials and you like them. Thank you. But now, let's see. Free client master simulators. I want to have a free slave there is like modbus plc yeah that's of course not like there is a python library i know that but there was i think that one yeah that's the one that i was uh, looking for the mod rs sim 2 this is the best simulator for modbus that you can get if it is the thing that i'm looking for because i have done all done that previously with modbus um Okay, it's not the one. That's a new, that's a new pop-up that I've just got. Okay. Now uh, we have that simulator here. What is that doing? Server listening, connected, PLC simulator. What are you doing? Can I configure you? About noise settings. Local IP address. I wanna... Can I not configure you? No, it's, it's actually not the application as well that I was looking for. But it might also be that I don't have access to all of the features because it's not supporting the DPI scaling that I've applied currently. And that's the wrong one. I'm just looking, I'm just gonna think that I go for Python actually. But there was like a comment line util. There was a comment line util that you were able to. That one. Yeah, I think that one. That's the one that I was looking for. Yeah, 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 that's that's the thing that I wanna wanna find, because this is basically a single exe. Okay, it needs like probably this Nancy DLL, um, and if I go to on server, ah, oh, what, 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 what? Modpol exe. Maybe there is already something on my computer. Uh, what is Modpol doing? Um, mod pol is, I think, the thing that I was searching, so I already got it installed. Nice. Um, Modbus Masters. No, it's a Modbus Master Simulator. There should be also one for Slave. Um, I think Diag Slave. That's probably Diag Slave. Um, Diagnostic Slave Simulator. Yeah, okay, that's what I want to do. Let's find out how I can handle that one. Modbus MTCP. MTCP, then I want to have a port number, but I actually want to have an IP address. Uh, slave address. Ah, so no, 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 that's the wrong one. Serial port. Default otherwise. Master. Okay, so it's listening on all of my address, but port address. Let's let's start at TCP. So now this is basically a Modbus slave that I've just started, and now the general idea would be that I can use DX slave. Oh, now I'm PowerShell. I don't like PowerShell. So now I can. Yeah, well, of course, this is a bit, f bit. I think mod, mod pol, yeah. And then I wanna have TCP, and now, how do I set up your IP address? Or is it just?
Now it's like pulling the slave and you can see that it's pulling here. So the slave, you can see on the slave, I'm getting uh, some informations while the master is like pulling. So that's the basic idea. That's basically what I want to do. So you can see this works. So now I have a Modbus slave on my computer running. And now I want to basically connect the PLC to it. Um, so now we can continue on here. Uh, so, first of all, I want to continue with the device configuration. Um, you got a Profinet name. Yeah, okay, it was automatically generated. That's fine, actually, for me. So this should all be... We should need to tinker around with these. Warm start, operating match before power off. That's okay. We need want to have these ones, memory bits, and maybe also system memory bits. That's another thing that you always want to enable on PLCs, so that you get a bit of an information here. Web server display, that's all good. We should not need to configure more of these, so now we have uh, updated our hardware config. Let's quickly load that. And this should load without a problem. Okay, now this is everything is fine. Now we have a bit of configuration on here. And now we could rather go on. Now I think I actually want to first uh, configure the I.O. that we have here. So you can see this, the, the, this module. I want to configure this module. And this module is a ET200S. We need to add this one. So we need to add this here by distributed I.O. ET200S interface module, Profinet. I don't have any idea which hardware ID this is actually. Maybe... Uh, is it somewhere there? Yeah, it should probably be here. But I can't zoom in here. Can I download that? iCloudPhotos.zip. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. One image in a zip. Can you open up Hike? Yeah, you can open up Hikes. So, 0HB0. Zero zero. Okay, they are all 0HB0. Zero 2BA... Zero. Uh, oh, I can't read that. That's that's a bit of a problem. One second, I need to read the serial number from there. Uh, or not the serial number, it's like the... the um, um, like the, the product identification, MLFB. Yeah. Need to read that. One second. Right, so it's uh, 3BA22. Yeah, now I can read it there, of course, as well. 3BA2022, that one. Now we can put that IO device in here. And what you can do is you can name it. So I call it IO slave. Um, now let's call it IO cabinet. Because it's a IO, the IO from the cabinet, I can assign that now to the Profinet uh, interface here. And if I assign it, you can see that they are connected here. That's important. And what I want to do is I want to quickly make sure that I am going to load the devices. So first I want to go into the configuration of that thing here. And I want to give it a new Profinet IP address. You can see that it is now on the IP address of 1. That's not what I want to do. I want to give it the IP address of 21 here. Everything else should be fine. The only thing is we need to assign these. All right. So let's load the configuration for the uh, PLC. Let's start the search. All right. However, uh, before we can do that, actually, we need to go. Um, yeah, we need to make sure that this ET is uh, configured probably. Uh, uh, is this is configured in a right way. 
in ungroup devices, we have that one. That's what we want to configure first. So to assign it a new IP address, um, I want to go online here with that device. And it now should be able to find that. No, I don't want to go. I want to go into, no, that's, that's not how it works. Um, assign IP address. This is what I want to do. I want to go to accessible devices. And I want to go in here. And now I can start the search. And if I start the search here, it's going to pop up. You can see currently it's called UV2. This is the IM, this is the interface module. And I want to select the UV2. I want to apply. And now I'm here. You can see that the correct IP address is configured. And now I can assign the new IP address to it. If I click assign, it's going to take a few seconds. And now the new IP address has been transferred successfully. Then I might want to also assign the, um, the Profinet name. So here. And now let's see if it already, it should not have transferred the name yet. Now we can see currently it's called uh, UV02. The name is different. And now I can click and assign name so that it gets its new name. And everything is okay. Now you can see everything is okay. And now what I can do is I can load the PLC. And if I load the PLC, stop all, consistent, that's all good. You can click on load. And if I now load the PLC, it's now connected with this uh, IO device. Which means that currently the IO device had a red LED and now it should have a green LED. So if I go into online, I might be able to see it here, communication diagnosis. If I go online, it should maybe already get information for that one. Yeah, you can see that it gets a check mark. And you can see that everything is good. IO controller for that Profinet device. So this is currently the IO cabinet. I don't know why it sometimes disconnects me. That's not good. I need to debug that, why I'm getting disconnected then uh, a few times. Um, but if I go into the online diagnostics of that one, this is the I.O. cabinet. Um, okay, so I'm getting disconnected every few secs. I don't know. I.O. controller. I.O. controller. So you can see the I.O. cabinet is connected with the I.O. controller. And it's all green, so that's that's good. So everything is, is, is as it should be. And now I need to uh, configure the device. Go offline here. And now if I go back to my device and networks, go into that one in here, I can configure that. How do I configure that? Well, I configure it with the, oh, no, that's wrong. I have the image already here. I configure basically all the modules that are connected here. And I might need to take maybe, um, I can maybe see if it's on my phone a bit sharper. If it's if it's just losing the sharpness through iCloud, no, the photo was was not good. I'm gonna quickly make another photo here uh, from my ET, from my I/O system, where all the cables are connected, and all the I/Os are connected. And I'm gonna make a photo of that so that I can type down the serial numbers on my computer. Now, actually, if you are doing the photo correctly, because it, I don't know, but it seems like my phone didn't mm, did not want to use a flash. But now I have a flashback in here and now I can get the proper uh, addresses. So the first thing that we have is a so-called PM, a power module. Uh, the power module uh, is used to... Um, distribute power to the, to the system. Is it that one for CA? Zero, 01, yeah, that's it. And what I can do is I can basically drag them into the position and I can virtually rearrange it inside of tier portal as it is in reality. Come on, why is my camera a bit 
bitchy today. Right, so the next modules are input modules. So the input modules are used to uh, input signals to the PLC, and these are so-called DI modules, so digital input. And I have four DI, and they are standard feature, so no high features here. And I think it should be that one, 4BD0010A... No? Do I use HF? 4BD0010... 4BD010... Oh, I actually have the high feature modules. Okay, so then Lewis used the high feature ones. I actually have three of them connected in here. So one, two, three, and you can see on the image, it's like one, two, three. And then I have a output module. It is a four uh, digital out. And I think this is, this is, this is, uh, this is not high features. These are high features, the first three, and the other one is not high feature. They have a few more software features in here. So now I have DO for digital output and I have 4DO, uh, but not high feature. Uh, 4DO, uh, 2 ampere, 2 amps, that one I think. 24 volt, uh, 2 amps uh, ST. So 4BD320, yeah, that's the one. And I can place it in here and now I've basically replicated my IO station. I think there is... There's no end module that I need to configure, no. The end module on these kind of devices were not that feature fault and you wanted a newer get generation of I.O. devices. And what I now need to do is I need to configure these I.O. devices. So first of all, every input and output on the PLC needs an address. So what you can see currently uh, is that the address are configured here. So you can see address 0, 1 and 2. And normally what I like what tend to do, it depends on how, how you want to see it, I actually make that one to start at 3. So that it kind of like count through it. And that it depends on how your conventions are, are on PLC programming. So you now can see the first module uses 0 0.0 to 0 0.3. So it's basically also counting from 0 to so 4 inputs. Then you have 1.0 to 1.3, so also 4 inputs, and then 2 to 4, and then the same for the outputs as well. And now what you of course need to do is you need to give these outputs a name, because if they don't have a name, it's a bit hard, yeah. Um, you don't want to remember all of these names. So what I can actually do is I can click the module, go to the properties, uh, and can actually configure them. Since these are like um, like this one, this is a high feature input. You actually have more options of what it can do um, than, than, than other ones. You can see that I can do short circuit diagnosis. So if there's a short circuit to ground, I can diagnose this. Um, I can do hardware interrupts uh, if they, they change, trigger for hardware interrupt. So actually there are many, many features in here that you can use because they stay a high feature. I don't need them. I want to go to IOTEX and I give them, uh, just give them some names. So first of all, this one is called, the first one is called T-Start. Um, then we have T, uh, IT, um, that one. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna get a name. Um, yeah. But before we want to do that, I first want to go to my uh, PLC tags, and I want to create a new tag table, and I want to call this tag table IOs. So these are my input and outputs. So my IOs are gonna go into a different tag table. And now I can configure them. So the first tag that I want to give them, I'm not quite sure. I want to quickly see. Uh, alarm, we have one and that is okay. Start, select A, one, A, B, okay. Um, I'm not quite sure which, um, uh, which I or which. I'm quickly gonna go to my cabinet and push the buttons to see them in action. It's just gonna uh, take a few secs. Right, uh, so I've quickly verified what my IOs are doing. And uh, the first thing that I have noticed uh, here is that this module is not of our interest currently. We don't 
care about that one yet. We care about that one. And that one first has uh, something called Anlage ein or uh, I'm just going to call it System On. So it's kind of like the, the basic, uh, I'm going to activate the system. Um, then I have a, I've, I've called it quite differently. Um, but in general, what, what this is going to be is this is going to be... Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a system on, uh, but this is kind of like a, um, uh, this is, I'm going to call this one system unlock, system on, and then we're going to have system, or actually then we're going to have select A because we're going to have a selection. Uh, select B. These are kind of like the selection buttons. And then we're gonna have this system kind of like system off. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Now, just to visualize them again, um, this module is is driven by different IOs. It's actually driven by the IOs that go down there, so we don't care about them yet. Um, so basically, power, and then we have a bit of IO in here. Um, but we don't care about these. I care about these two modules, which are basically driven by. And uh, now this is again in iCloud. Um, basically driven by that panel. First, I have this this lock, which you can operate with a uh, key. This button that can be operated with a key, you kind of like put it on and then it kind of like locks and you can remove the key to lock the system or unlock the system. Then I have this button, that green button that I can push and I have two, two selection switches that are off or on. And I have another button to um, yeah push again the red button. And this is kind of like now I can label them so that you understand them better. So this is basically the uh, key lock. Then this is the... Um, green push button and this is selection switch one and selection switch two and then we have uh, that one in here and this is called um, red push button so that's how I configure them that's that's good and now I just want to put them into the different tech table so I'm gonna move them to the other tech table, and you can see how the tech table fills because I have selected it here. So I'm moving them basically to my IO tech table. And that's everything that I need. Now what I need to do is I need to configure the last module. The last module is actually quite easy. We have uh, a alarm that's currently not connected. These are the cables that are just hanging around. I need to con connect them as well. Um, then I have a um, uh, Leuchte bereit. This is also um, going down to the modules here. And I have two more Leuchten, how we call them in Germany. Um, and one is the uh, Leuchte ein. And the other is uh, the Leuchte aus. Leuchte ein is basically on. It's the green one and the aus is the red one. So first of all, the first two I don't care. But this one I care. Uh, this is... Um, uh, system on and then we have oh yeah okay P let's call it P system on it's kind of like tend to name them P if it is kind of like a a, 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 a lamp and then we have system fault so F fault so system fault and on and then I can add, add in the comment this is basically the uh, green light this is the red light, all right. And maybe I do wanna give them, um, yeah, kind of like names. These are all switches, so we tend to call them S. Maybe I can refactor them easier, but I think I've got to do it like that quickly. So they all gonna get a S. Here they have all an S and then we have a P and this is now all looking correctly and what I now want to do is quickly load my changes. So my hardware configuration has changed and I do need to download this to update my hardware config. While this is downloading I can drink a sip of water.
All right, and now I can uh, start. And if I start the module, then we are online. And now since I am online, I can actually observe the values of these. So if I go online, uh, we can actually click on that glasses here and we can actually see that. So you can see that the only thing that's currently uh, on off these switches is the um, system off because this is actually something where you switch something off and if you want to switch something off, you're always connected so that by default it is uh, true. So by default system off is true and as soon as kind of like the wire breaks or you push the button it goes to false. So this is kind of like preventing wire breaking faults. This is how you do it in, in automation technology. You can see all of the others are, are false currently because they are uh, not doing it. And yeah, that, that's actually exactly how we want it. This is totally fine. And I can actually go in here and I could um, I could force these. I can add a value and they say, hey, go, go to true. But this is done with uh, voice tables, right? I can go in here and I can say I want to have my P system on. And I want to add the, first of all, I think I need to go online. No, I'm already online. I want to add, force it to, ah, come on. I want to force it to true and then I can force them. And if I force the value, it is true and it will always be true. And if I go back to my iOS, you can now see that it has been, uh, has been forced here. So you can see it's still false, but... It kind of like is voice and quite interesting that it's not showing true, but you can see that it kind of like is voiced. Maybe because the voice table is not on the PLC. Yeah, but voicing is not something that you do want to do. We don't want to have voicing. So let's remove that. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to write a bit of boilerplate logic and do a bit of modbus so that our modbus slave is going to receive something. So now we are going into PLC programming, yay, finally. All right, so how do I do that? First of all, I'm going to go to my program blocks, and then what I want to do is I want to add, first of all, a new group. And we have our, um, let's call it 10, or let's call it 20, um, communication. This is going to be communication to our computer. And then what I want to have, let's maybe even even go this way. Let's first hit a control, CTRL, let's call it CTRL for control. And the so-called main OB is going to go to control. And then I want to rename that to 30 communication. And I want to add a new group to call it 20. And I'm going to call this one system logic. So we're going to have some system logic that's going to control how our system works. We have some control, which controls our application's flow. And we have communication, where we control the communication to bot bus. And the first thing that I'm going to add is a new block in here. And what I'm going to add is a so-called data block. And this is a global DB. And the global data block is basically a, a, a global unique data block. And I'm gonna call this one, uh, can I select numbers here, 301. Oh, now I already created it that. Uh, let's rename it. It doesn't matter that I press, press enter. I can rename it here. So 300, uh, come on. I'm not allowed to rename you. Okay, let's delete it again. I'm, I'm, I'm online, that's not a good idea. Let's go offline for that. Um, no, not a new group. Ah, oh, come on, now I'm misclicking again. And then your block. All right, so data block. So manual number 301, and I'm going to call that one DB301. And the name of the DB301 is the code called Modbus Data X Change. Chain X Change. Yeah, okay. So. This is basically now all the data that's been exchanged with Modbus and thus our um, C++ application. And what I want to do is I first of all now want to add a clock bit. And the clock bit is a boolean value and it's a single bit that uh, shall be exchanged with our C++ application. All right. So now we have added this data uh, block. And now what I want to do is I want to add a new data exchange block. So I'm going to add a function block that's going to be written in um, in, in, in uh, FBD function block. I don't know. I only know the German names, actually. And we're going to call this one FB. Actually, we don't need an FB. We can actually do this with an FC. We're just going to do an FC. Write this in FBL. And we're going to call this one 
301 as well. F3, C101. And this is Modbus. Modbus Data Exchange. And now what we want to do in here is we want to use Modbus. Mod. Uh, of course, now I gotta get math. Uh, I'm not quite sure where it is actually. I'm actually not even sure if I have the package installed for that. But somewhere down here you have the communication. Modbus TCP, there is it. Uh, Modbus TCP server communicates as a Modbus TCP server. I am actually the client. No, 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 no. So, I need the Modbus client. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna change something. We're gonna make it actually a... We actually make it an FB because it needs some data blocks. FB... Ah, again, I am again misclicking. I'm such an idiot. 302 FB 302 Modbus data exchange. All right. Now we go. And what I want to now do is Modbus client. And we're going to have this as multi instance DB. Which basically means it's it's as a property in here. Alright. So first of all, what we now need to do is we need to fill out all of these things. Um, we're going to open up the help in here quite handily. Which of course doesn't open. Okay. So... And what I basically do with that block here, it's basically um, making sure that Modbus is exchanged. Not quite sure what the data types of these are. Modbus mode. Come on. Change instance, insert method, insert common properties. Information, timestamps. There is no information about the block itself, that's sad. Because actually I haven't used it for quite a while. Let's let's open up this in the help so in the help system. The help system it's amazing. It basically gives you all the information about these blocks. I haven't worked with Modbus in a while. MB client. connect parameter no I don't want to have the connect parameter I want to have all of them let's see uh, I'm currently uh, preparing a PLC for um, communicating with a C++ application via Modbus and I'm just quickly uh, taking a look at the parameters. How I uh, use it. All right. And what I want to do is I want to see how it works. You can see these are like the information how, how it works. You have like the stun out busy error. MB mode. Read, write, or diagnostics. So that's what we want to do. MB mode. MB mode 0 is read. MB 1 and 2 is write. Okay, so if 0 is read and 1 is write. Okay, that's basically what I uh, tried to do. So maybe what we want to do, we could be maybe able to, can we add a struct in here? 
So we have the read section of the mod boss and the write section of the mod boss. And we want to read a clock bit. Let's read the in clock currently and let's write an out clock just to, to make sure that this works. All right. Um, and now what I basically want to do is I want to first, I want to read the uh, mod boss read. So we want to read from the mod boss TRPLC. So we're going to put this to zero, which means Modbus uh, read. And now we need to define the other features. If I go back, I should be able to see them. Uh, data address depends on Modbus read. A number of bits of words. Okay, so basically we need now an address where we want to uh, read from. And then we need a length. So data address. So modbus zero, modbus function, okay. Output bits on the remote address. I think I actually wanna read holding registers actually, um, and not bits. Read one to 125 on the remote address zero, okay. So MB data address 4001. Okay, so we, it seems we start at 4001 with Modbus function 3. Okay. Data address. Okay, so we start 4001. Okay. 4001 and function 3. Where can I select the function? What? Um, no, I want to have that. Or is it a combination? Is it? I think it's a combination. I think it can deduce because this is not the Modbus function. It's not an input. It can deduce that. Yeah, it kind of like can deduce that from where you read it, and it then knows how to do it. Okay, one to one of first on the remote address zero two. Okay, I think we're gonna start with four thousand one. And then as length, I am yeah, going to quickly specify that I want to read like one maybe. Maybe let's start with one and see how this goes. But I think like the problem that we now have is that this one is a bool. And I think holding registers are... How many bits are holding registers? Modboss, uh, holding registers. Because holding registers on modboss are... Uh, actually a bit more involved than you might think. So a coil is one bit, increment is one bit, and a input register as well as a holding register is uh, 16 bits. Okay, so holding registers 16 bits. I think holding registers is definitely the one that we want to do. Um, and what we now want to do is uh, basically read and write these 16 bits. 16 bits. Um should be like a char is 8-bit int i think it should be a normal uh a s int as far as i know oh come on these plc data types are always confusing if you haven't done it in a while um some data types let's quickly uh see no it's an yeah i think a normal integer not not, not an s int so it was my first first observation was right. A word, yeah, a word. We actually want to read a word, yeah. Word, double word, yeah. Let's let's do word. And yeah, we can let's call this uh, in v one for input word one. OV1 for output word 1. And then we're just going to read these words and then, yeah, they are they are fine. All right. So now we have them defined like that. And now we want to just read them. Okay. So data length, let's read 1. And now we need the data pointer. This is going to be interesting. I'm not sure how we want to specify you. Because this is now going to the first one. We want to go to the read one, right? That's that should. 
And then we go to inv invert one. And if we are going to invert one, it basically means that it starts writing there. I don't know. What is a data pointer? Let's see how the data pointer should work. Because... It's a pointer to the number for that also. Okay, but it should work. P hashtag bit address. Okay, we need to have the, the pointer. For buffer in the memory, use a pointer as follows now. I don't think that we want to use a pointer. I think this should be fine yet. Now the Modbus client needs to be somehow configured. Um, the connect is probably the structure that configures how it's connected, right? Because we need to configure where to connect. Yeah, tcon IPv4. Interface ID, ID, connection type, active establishment, remote address, remote port, local port. Yeah, uh, that's definitely what we want to specify. So we need this connect struct. So let's make you constant, I think. Is that in out or is it just in? If it's in, we can make it constant. Or is it re is it writing something back? No, it's it's writing something back to that. So we need to have it static. Is it MB? What data type was it? Connect parameter. Two different connection descriptions can be used for the client. Tcon IPv4. No, we want to have the Tcon IPv4. So, T, come on. TCP, MB. T, con, okay, maybe it's not named like that. I need to... This structure needs to be created. Or do I need to define a structure myself? Maybe I need to actually configure the structure myself. Let's see. No, it is there, but I need to type in the name manual. Okay. Let's call this one MB connection. And then we can configure that. Default value. Interface ID 0 is, I think, OK. Ten, two, 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 zero, one. Remote port. Ah, come on. What was the remote port by default? This was the port 502. Yeah, let's use 502 then. 502, this one is going to go to don't care, remote address, actus, active established, false. Okay, so that's okay. Connection type, 11 is TCP IP. Connection refresh identifier, yeah, no, I think this should be all good. And now we can add this in here, MB connection. Why can I not connect you down there? Yeah, there we go. Now now it allows me to do it. <laughs> um, I think the request input is to request the connection, which we could just set to one. 
Or maybe we're gonna add them as an input. Let's add this. Connect. Disconnect. Now I think actually request is something differently actually. I think connect uh, or request means that it requests a, a cycle update. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's how we want to do it. So we want to have a deconnect one. It's not going to be in here. Or actually, yes, we're going to have them. But we are going to move you down here. And then we're going to revert the results. So as long as connect is carefully like supplied, we are connecting. And else we are disconnecting. And then we have the request one. And this one is going to be set to... Actually, I want to set it to connect. So as long as we are connected, we are requesting. Else we're going to disconnect. We could add a clock so that we are not updating every cycle. So maybe let's add a... A end in here and add the clock in here and then what I want to have as a output is uh, I want to have something called I want to actually just have an error output everything else shall indicate everything is good and we're gonna have a modbus read so currently we can just pipe the error through so everything is good all right, so now we just need to make sure that this one is actually called. So I'm gonna go my main OB, uh, change it to function blocks, and then I'm just gonna add the modbus data exchange here. And then AS it's here, and then I'm just gonna pipe these to true. And then we maybe add this one to the P system fault. And system fault is just gonna uh, contain uh, the error from the communication. Okay. So this looks good. The question is, does it compile and have I configured and interpreted everything correct? Compiling finished. Ah, okay, now I actually want to compile everything, not just a block. Okay. Let's, let's see if this works. We can check this by downloading it to the device. Okay, our device is, our slave is not gonna get requests currently. So maybe something is wrong. Let's see. Let's go online and find out. Hmm. So we're getting requests, but we are getting an error. That's nice. <laughs> so something has gone wrong. Um, so what we need, what we can do is we can interpret the status, um, status values, values here. But we can monitor them like that. What is the status? Let's see what the status is. Okay, we, we should be able to actually monitor the status because we have the MB connect FB here. And now I should be able to at least see. I cannot monitor this. I cannot do my tech monitoring here. Interesting. Why can I not do it? That's sad. But we might be able to actually wait a minute. I cannot do this because I'm multi instance. But I should be able to monitor it here. Not in the connection in the instance. Why can I not see the current value?
I should be able to see it in here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the status is a word and we are getting 80 BB. 80 BB. That's okay. Invalid value at active. Okay, so we the connect parameters wrong. Okay. That's something that I can work with. Let's see. Start value. Any port, remote port. Address, configured correctly. Okay, so we probably... That's 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 the thing, right? Interface ID and connection ID. Interface ID and connection ID is the thing that we need to specify. And I'm not quite sure, but I think what they mean is they want to define like the 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 profinet interface, maybe. This one is we just have one interface, so the ID should be one because zero seems to indicate an, a failure. Um. So what we want to do is we want to go to the no connection one and when the connection O U C what is the connection O U C connection O U C okay so every okay we just need a, a unique ID per Modbus so we're just gonna add it to one. And then we see that we can load the software. Still no connection attempts currently, but this could also be firewall issues of my computer, but probably it's still on the PLC. And no, ah yeah, okay, the, the, the dots are still moving. So let's see, what is now the problem? What is my status? Still ADBB? Okay. Maybe because we need to reinitialize that. We can do that. Because now we basically loaded uh, while the CPU was running. Which means that we did not do anything. Uh, display, no. What? Ah, no, that, this one is. We can go over stop and go back to run. Which basically means that the CPU is reinitializing. It might not reset the blocks, but I think reinitializing should be enough to allow that one to reinitialize, right? Is it? No. It seems not. Um, what I could try is I could try. Of course, this is not a tag, so I now need to something that I should add as a tag like the the connect button actually what I want to do is I want to put this quickly on the, the selector switch to connect so then I can set up and, and push the button so now connect should be if I go to monitoring should be off I think yeah, it's off. It's false. So we also have a false error. And now if I switch the button, it might might get an error. Everything might be good. So let's see. Uh, I, I'm probably going to, yeah, of course, I'm going to continue on the D3, D12E series. But I'm bit of uh, problems with uh, the architecture. And I need to do a few things before I can continue on with the videos. I want to quickly switch the button. So what I've done now is I've switched the button to on. Okay, that's interesting because the button is not going to go on. <laughs> that's not uh, how it should work. Um, okay, so I got them wrong. Which is now on.
Ah, uh, probably mixed matched. What? Okay. Yeah, of course. I've uh, mixed them, matched them. That's I've done them wrong. So basically, this is one, this is two. Probably also add them. Zero, one. Let's load them again. Now the selecting switch is correct. Let's see. But we are again in system fault. I have one more thing that I might think could be the problem, but let's see the diagnostic. What it's gonna tell us. Status is still ADB. Yeah, but there's one thing that I probably do need to do later on, but I'm still a bit confused. Do I maybe have a bit of more details somewhere why the connection failed? Connected false, active connection. Let's see the connection quickly. Interface ID, ID. Connection type is TCP, active established false, ten two 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 zero. Oh, is, this, is that the right IP address? Let's see. Uh, ten two two two. Ah, I might have a problem, but I think. This is not the main problem, because I have actually a different network at the uh, range. But it's, it's there's nice no root in between, so it's not a problem for the PLC side. It would be a problem for the computer side, but it's not a problem because everything works. Um, I quickly can see. Reconfig. Um... Interesting. If multiple addresses, right, this is okay. That's expected because here Tierpot was setting up these addresses. So I have multiple actually, multiple addresses in one interface. Uh, but this shouldn't be a problem. Maybe the problem is that this is running too long. I don't know. Did they not catch the new ad address? But I think I started it afterwards. Not quite sure. So normally now I should be able to just pull off the put the button off and then back on and it should reconnect. Let's try it out. All right, so the fault should be cleared now. If I go up, status is 7,000. And 7,000 should mean something like um, 7000 means no job active and no connection established. Okay. Yeah, that's okay because connection is maybe uh, we want to do it differently, actually. Let's uh, wire up in the another button here for the clock. S select B. Let's put that one in here. So that we have a bit of more finer control. Let's see. Ah, 
uh, of course it changed because I've, uh, I've I've removed the network. Of course this is the same problem doing C plus plus. Let's see. Uh, if I now can clock through that. First of all, I want to put in connect and then I want to see if it can establish the connection. Still no connection here. So currently we are at start of 7000. This is okay. Now let's put on the first button. So, as you can see, I still have an issue, but this is ADBB. Invalid connection type. Okay, only... Oh my goodness, I just need to set this parameter to true. Maybe I should start reading the stuff that I'm trying to use. Um... I need to have this to true. This is required. Consistent download. Uh, where is my data? Block. Should there be that one? Oh, okay, there we go. I have to collapse that. Okay. Let's quickly see if the connection has updated. It has updated, but it's currently it's false. Uh, yeah, this is because um, put the PLC and stop and run, and then you can see it's now going to true. And now my status is. I still have an issue, but I now have 89B. But what is 89B? 80. 80. 80, what? 89B. 89B, 80, 80, 80, 89B. Okay, there's no exact code that matches that, so it's probably a combination out of bits, maybe? We probably... Alright, you know what? Um, I might have a suspicion what is going on even through... Uh, no, I don't want to put a CPU and stop. Um, I have a suspicion what might be the problem. Um, I think the problem is that I'm doing too many requests. It could be. So what I basically want to do is... What I want to do is additionally to clock... I also want to have a value to uh, kind of like lock the request. Um, to kind of like lock requests. Maybe I can... I don't think that I can... Can I push them through? Yeah, I can push this one through. And I can put this one to set. So this one is setting a value. This is a setting... Um, operation pending. And OP pending is going to go in here. OP pending. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Of course, this is a bool. OP pending. There we go. And I also want to have OP pending in here. And I want to have not OP pending. And what I'm going to do here at... Actually, no, I'm, I'm an idiot. Come on. We have this busy flag here, so we can basically set this to OP pending and set not OP pending in here. So as long as we are busy, we are OP pending, and then only we can do another request. Um, however, what I was still want to do is I want to um, clock deck. I want to have a clock detection. Uh, where is my instructions? P trick. So every positive edge of clock shall only be used. Uh, and then we have the clock deck for clock detection. 
every positive edge of the clock is going to initiate a connection or a request. All right. But I think it wasn't even that issue, right? Because I'm an idiot. It was already having the the action in here. It already had the issue even through we did not clock, I think. Right? If I monitor that one, it should get an error die straight away. Even through we are not requesting. We are connected, but we don't have a clock. And we also don't have an operation pending. So that's not the, the issue. So what is your status currently? Status. 89B. That, that's a better error code. I think there was a bit of an issue. Maybe there were some blocks that were not initialized. 89B. 80... 80, 80. What? Eighty nine B. It's probably that one, actually. It's probably a combination out of status. Okay. Let's see. Eighty nine B. This is not a Do we have nine B somewhere? Interesting. How do I debug a code that's not known? I can try to cycle a, a single request, maybe. If I cycle a single request, maybe I get uh, an info. I... This should have cycled a request now. But no, I, I didn't get one or something. Hmm. <laughs> okay. That's interesting that I don't get information on this error code, but maybe the internet knows some. Um, MB client 89B. <laughs> um, yeah, of course they know it. Let's see. Enter 64. Of course, I, I can't view these images, right? That's, that's always. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Local Profinet interface port one. Ah. 
maybe it has something to do with the properties of the ports. Um, maybe in device and networks I can get a bit of more information on these ones. I don't think it shouldn't be really that one, but... Mm, turns into standard machine project. One hundred? Would one hundred be a thing? Profinet interface one, X one, hardware identifier. 64 that is uh, that could be a thing right is it changeable if i'm offline it's not but it might be Device number, time synchronization, operation mode, IO controller, IO device, advanced options, time domain, medium copper, port X1, P1. Uh, so it's either 1 or the 64. 65? <laughs> what? Uh, where is 65 coming from? 64? A hardware identifier. What? Hardware identifier. Web server X66. But this is like changing every time I'm opening these up. So I think 64 might be the thing that we are looking for in here. Interface ID. Yeah. Let's see if this is a thing. I still got an error. Because the interface ID is also not matching. Let's go to stop. Let's go to run. Now we got an error of false. That's looking good. Accepting connection. Okay, so this is good. So now we are connected with the PLC to our um, to our computer. So now the PLC connects to our computer. And now we should be able to read something. So how do I read something? By t taking and, and switching the, the other switch, uh, the other, uh, other uh, selector switch. I'm uh, tangled with my cables. Let's Let's see if this works. Can I now go to my PLC and I flip the switch every time I flip it. So now basically what I've done is uh, I have flipped the switch four times and you can actually see that we are doing something. Reading coils from 4001 one reference. That's exactly what we have done. We have read. Dude, this is amazing. This works. We, we have successfully read it values via the PLC. We don't get issues. Active established true. Um, no, this is here. Uh, disconnected false, uh, request false, input and output done, 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 done. Okay. Uh, you can see that this is now working. Status 7004. 7004 is a code for connection established and monitored. No job processing active. Okay. So this works. So now you can see we can read values from the computer. So this one shall now have a value. Probably it's zero. Yeah, because we probably have written zero. But you can see that we read coils from 4001 and we have read one reference. Okay. Now you can see we get a reconnect from the PLC, actually. A PLC reconnects in, in certain uh, time intervals. That's okay, because probably the connection closed and something was, was wrong with the connection. Maybe... Did we get disconnected here? No. But it might be that the connection got timed out or something is not working. Um, and it now goes back to reading. Yeah, thank you, uh, Bruce. <laughs> it's a good thing. Thank you. Yeah, I love it when something works. Now the only thing that we need to change is we now need to be able now to write something. Because that's not 
reading is not the only thing that we do. So I want to write, and I want to actually write 16 hashtag FF. So uh, all bits on. That's just what we want to quickly write to see that writing work. So basically what we'll do is we do the same thing again. So let's insert a new network. Let's add a new, yeah, let's, let's add it freshly so that everything is cleaned up. So MB client DB automatic multi instance. Do we need another connection? I don't think that we need another connection actually. Let's really, can I refactor rename that to one and two? So this one shall be one and you shall be two. Ah, oh, of course. No, I need to cycle them through three, one and two and then let's maybe move you up so one two then we have the connection maybe the connection to the top connection instance op pending and then let's add the connection in here and this is exactly what i want but i don't want to go to read now i want to go to write actually i think this should be also sufficient I don't need to reference the first one. It just tried me to trick into doing that. So write and read should be now good. And now, of course, we also need multiple ops pending. So op pending one. And then we want to have op pending two. And then we can head, add op pending two in here. And what I now first need before I'm going to do all of that uh, is I need a clock evaluation network. So evaluate clock. So I want to evaluate these things like this, this clock thing. This is going to go in here. And what I need to do is after the clock evaluate. Yeah, that e, yeah it rec. Uh, I want to evaluate the request. Um, clock deck is still okay and then I want to have a temp value the temp value will be uh, rec so just rec so that we are doing the ref request here it's a temp value temp means it's only valid during that single call and I want to have connect in here and I want to clock is already evaluated and then I want to have op pending one and I want to have op pending two and they are both uh, shall both be not active and then we can directly pip through the request in here and then we can do this down here as well so we are requesting only when both are there then we have uh, connect negated so not connected now these modes and things we need to figure them out now I also need a few attempts for um, uh, for these, these errors, so error 1 as a temporary. No, come down, down here, please. Or up here, use this also, okay. Error 1. Error 2. Alright, so that's what we'll have, error 1 and error 2. So error 1. And error 2. And then we have one uh, error evaluation. And we have an error as soon as one is valid. So error one and error two. And in case these are good, we're gonna go to general error there as well. No, nope. come on. Error, there we go. So if one error is present, the general error is gonna go on or pending is evaluated down here for the request evaluation. And now we just have to need to find out the parameters for the second one. Let's go to the information system again and let's go to the mode. All right, read. We have read holding registers. Write output bits. Write, 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 write. Read output bits, input bits. Write output bits. Write holding registers. Um, but I need to find out that I write the correct ones. The question is on the remote. So I think we want to go mode one. Uh, 
And then we also write the 4000s. Okay. So we do the same thing, but with one. Okay. So let's see. Currently, we can, I think, always write at least 100. So actually, I want to go then from 40,101. 40,101 with mode 1. So mode 1. 40,101 is the address, and I'm gonna start with just a single one. I do I maybe wanna add the done value as well? Now, I don't think the done is really relevant. I just wanna see if there's an issue with it. So, if there's an error and everything else is fine. Alright. We could actually maybe add the data pointer as a parameter. The read and write pointer then the block would be a bit more universally but i think it's okay to have it like that which means that this probably needs to be exchanged because we had the um thing you can update them somehow update there we go now i've updated the block and everything is good now i could quickly recompile that everything is good and now we should if i download that reinitialize we should first get a i can see that we are always getting the the connections there and if i now start the plc again i would probably think that we're getting a new connection here and yeah currently i'm not i need to cycle it manually quickly but you can see we're reconnected that's good and now i can cycle it to see if everything works uh we might need to have a different uh ah no before I do that, we have an we have an issue in here. I do need a separate connection one. Uh, we're gonna have it, problems with that. Um, I can tell you why in a second, because I now have two inbid in instances of MB client. They both need a different connection ID. So actually, I do want to have a connection one and a connection two, and I hate it that they are always swapped. So connection 1 has the ID of 1 and the connection 2 should have an ID of 2. Now this should be this should be now better. Or they are going to have problems. Hi, welcome to the stream. So, now this should be correct and then let's see if we now can a bit get a bit of data in here so now we should have a reconnect or do we already get a reconnect am i online offline the cpu is in run i put it in stop then run quickly to reinitialize it we should get a reconnect or is the connect it might be that the connection is still active because i don't know how s7 works in this case Let's see. Oh, we have an error, actually. The second one has an error. Why does the second one has an error? Let's see why we got an error here on the second one. Both have an error, okay. ID two one Okay Client instance one error code eight one eight B eight one eight B eight one eight B eight one eight B Eight one eight B. Okay, so the pointer doesn't work like that. Interesting. How they how this works in here. So we now have a problem with the pointer. I thought that this would be sufficient if I just reference the right one. Okay. But it seems like that I need to reference the first word. What are you doing? Uh what was read? And you're on what was write. Okay, good. Okay, then let's reference the word. That's okay. Fine with that. 
even I don't like I mean yeah in C++ it's like a pointer to a structure it's the same like the pointer to the first element of the structure so yeah I don't know PLC programming is a kind of different in some cases now we are good am I on an error false false and now I should have get reconnects yeah you can actually see that I've got two connects here um, because we have now two communications going on and if I now swap the, the switch we should always get a read and a write let's 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 test it out if I now go and push the switch I have operated the switch uh, four times again. And you can see... Reading coils from 4001 and writing, holding... I'm reading coils now? Uh, why am I writing coils? Did I mess something up? Um, I do want to read the same ranges actually, that would be better. Wild, right, read, ah, right holding registers and read holding registers. So 0, 1 and 4,001. 4,001 is always the start address. Oh, 40,000. This is actually what I w <laughs> wanted to do, actually. Uh, let's load the configuration again. Okay. Now the addresses should match. Now I have again here reconnected because I restarted the, or reloaded the. No, I think this was actually a normal timeout. It had nothing to do that I loaded because the communication I loaded just the program changes. This is how PLCs work. They don't restart the whole application. They just, uh, they just like hot swap the code, right? If you want to take it like that. But the connections are still like active. Uh, but I can now since it's uh, connected again. That's the actual uh, new firmware. I can operate the switch again, a few times maybe, yeah, you can see I can pipe the input through and uh, yeah, now I can, can see what it then did, yeah, writing holding registers from one and writing holding registers, okay, so now we are in the in the proper uh, device, so slave 255 and Ah, it's slave 255. I, I don't care. But you can see that I see like uh, writing and reading holding registers. That's exactly how it works. And now we just need to make the PLC do this in a regular time interval. Right? That's that's exactly what I want to do. And before we can do that, actually, I do need to change a few things. Actually, I do need to change to actually pipe out the, um, the, um, the busy one. The busy one needs to go out there. And I might also change a bit of how the inputs are named. So I don't care about static, I don't care about temp in, out, I care about these ones. So now I have error and I have busy. This is what I want to have, busy and error here now. Maybe let's add busy first. And I have connect and yeah, let's keep it yeah, let's keep it on a clock. Let's let's let that's okay. That's okay. We we can call a clock, that's just a clock signal when it when it should do that. We now need to just generate the busy signal. Busy signal. Basically, it works the same like the error, but it is instead of getting the error, it is going to get the operations. Op pending one or op pending two is going to give it a busy signal. All right. So now in our main.ob, we can update the block call, and now we have the error system fault. We have connect and clock. Now connect is okay. I'm just going to leave it at the button. However, um, this default is not good. I want to now um, yeah, make the, the Modbus calls a bit better. For that, I'm going to have a, uh, a new block. And the new block is going to be a function block. And this is going to be the uh, FB. 
How was my uh, okay? FB 101, and this FB is gonna be called no, actually 103 because it's the FB controlling the communication. Communication control. So this is the communication control FB. Um, Modbus data exchange. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Uh, I can now remove that one, and if I remove that, the the B is without an instance, right? This is my data exchange. This is that one. This was the instance. We can delete that one. And now I can go into my communication control. And what I can do now is I can now call my data exchange in here, use it as a multi-instance CB and put it in here. And then inside of my main OB, now inside of main, um, we need to create like a DB. And I'm gonna call it one. Yeah, okay. It's, it's it's okay. It can be called like the FB. Let's hit OK, and then we have it in here. And now basically we basically just here we're gonna call thirty. Um, yeah, let's lower. Let's say handle communication. Handle communication like that. There we go. And now we basically just need to write everything in here. Now, uh, what I want to do is um, I do want to maybe do I want to interconnect them in here? Maybe I don't know. I'm gonna not have it in here. However, what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have my clock signal, and my clock signal is actually gonna be quite interesting because it's gonna be generated in a very um, specific way. So we're gonna have a static, and I'm gonna call this one um, Modbus uh, Com Clock. So Modbus Communication Clock. It's a boolean, and this is uh, used to handle the come on, handle the clock. And then I wanna co put connect statically to a one because I, I I'm not okay for me. And in general, what I wanna do is down here in a new network okay mobius communication clock is set to a value here okay well we need to pipe out busy manually but what i wanted to basically do here is let's let's add a flip-flop in here sr a set and reset flip-flop uh, and what I want to assign is I want to assign the FB data exchange. No, I don't want to set that one. I want to set the communication clock. I mean, I'm an idiot. Uh, Modbus communication clock. I want to set this and this is going to be equal to without a flip-flop. We can do it without a flip-flop um, instance. And I want to set this equal to busy. I want to set this to be equal to not busy communication clock so the communication clock if we are busy the communication clock is zero if we're not busy the communication clock is one so we are basically feeding a um, communication as soon as we are done and maybe what i want to do is i want to add an error output in here as well activate and maybe let's put an activate and an, an, an error output in here so let's call this now yeah, let's enable communication now let's, uh, that's like, that's that by default and enable. Active com, I want to call this one active com. To have an active communication in here. And error goes out to error in here. So now we have kind of like the connection of that one. Drive, drive Modbus in here. So now we are driving the Modbus communication. And then in the main OB, we just need to refresh that one. And I do want to always have an active communication, and this one is going to still go to the default, to the lamp. And this is going to do quite some changes, so I might need to, I oh, just need to reinitialize, not even overstop. All right. Okay, something is not working, or I should directly see it feeding all the information. So we have an error.
Okay. I think I know what the problem is. We are too fast. And we might should add this in an end and also... It's, it should be not having an error and it should not be busy. And then we can do the clock and maybe what we want to do is we want to make sure that the clock is also not firing too often. Um, we have the default tag table and in here we have clocks. And maybe let's say, I mean, 5 hertz. What is 5 hertz? 1 divided by 5 is yeah every 200 milliseconds. Yeah, let's do the 5 hertz clock in here as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Ah, hatte ich eine Ausbildung auch. I have actually learned this as a job, what I'm doing here. So, yeah. <laughs> Gute alte Tia Bordal. Uh, my playlist has come to an end. That's not nice. Has it? Has it not? Nobody knows. Has it has. So let's restart the playlist. So let's go in here and see what we got. If it's now I have a errors. Why do I have errors? What is the error now? It suddenly doesn't want to work. Let's see. Let's see what the, what the error code is. Uh, probably the... Uh, it's not multi-instance, so I need to go in here. Let's see. What is the error code? 80... A3? 80A3. 80, 80. <laughs> uh, uh, 80A3. 80A3. Let's see. Probably it's some garbage. Uh, because the error codes are not in here. So let's do it the good old way. Ah. This is now working better, I think. This is what I want to see. It's like alternating through these cycles. They just gone through stop and run to make sure everything is initialized correctly. And now it should spam me that it's reading the holding registers. Maybe five hertz is is it too fast? No, I think it's actually fine to do this with five hertz. It's 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 fine. But this is kind of like the idea. Now we are reading what we should do. Okay. But if I press Ctrl C, we should get an error actually. <laughs> oh, we don't. Is that not an error? I mean, we don't... 7002. What is 7002? Connection is being established. Okay, so we should get an error. <laughs> At some point, maybe. <laughs> Shouldn't... Should we get an error if the connection does not establish? But we also don't request. Oh, it does. Oh, no, no. We are re requesting. We are requesting. We're not getting an error. Is there even an error code for... Connection failed. Hmm. But I think what happens if I restart the slave? Is it connecting? Yeah, it's connecting. Oh, that's good. That's at least good. Um, I don't think that we, we are getting like four and six and some other codes, but not two, I think. So maybe 
Oh, uh, we do? No. Uh, I don't care about these ones. Um, I get what what values do I get? Like f five, four, and six, but we don't get seven thousand two. So maybe we're gonna add a bit of diagnostics to that so that we know why the connection is being established. So that if it's not, yeah, maybe we're gonna have a a connected a connected attribute so that I can see if it's when it's connected and not. Something that we should add to it. Which goes to the communication. F B. Which means that we need to yeah, yeah, maybe evaluate this. So eval evaluate uh, busy or now evaluate not or evaluate connected. It's just gonna be very rudimentary, but it's probably gonna be enough. So yeah, let's see it. Hi, welcome to the stream. So what I want to do is I want to have the uh, uh, the equal um, the comp boy is I think it's called compare. Um, yeah, or well, okay, oh, CMP, CMP equal. So we have a big end. Then we have always two ends connected. Hashtag 7002 is my... Oh, okay, yeah, I need to data type. What data type are you? Status is a vert, okay. So we want to compare if they are equal. And it is the status from the MB client instance one status. So the status vert. So the status is equal to 7002 and error. So we don't want to have an error and we want to have them equal. Or basically what we want to do is we don't have want to have them equal and we don't want to have an error. So the comparison must be not equal. They both need to be not equal. They both don't need to have an error. And then we are kind of like connected. So as an output, we have like busy, error, and I want to have OK for connection OK. And then we can add OK in here. Save it. Yeah. Um, it's actually, I am currently switching my daytime time job to get back to PLC pro programming, actually, because... I've also gone quite far away from it. I was doing like IT infrastructure for PCS7, process control system, which is kind of like a very old and derivative of S7. And I'm just, just doing uh, IT infrastructure there. And now actually for November, I'm getting a new job where I can do PLC programming. So I'm trying to kind of like get a bit uh, back into it with all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Currently, and a bit of Modbus is always nice to do. So yeah, <laughs> uh, can yeah relate to that. It's a really interesting thing in Germany from the Ausbildung. Like I've learned Elektronika für Automatisierungstechnik, uh, and then did the the university degree for electrical engineering on top of that. And yeah, now I'm getting back to PLC programming. It's gonna be fun. I, I like. I really love PLC programming. It's it's nice. It has a few things, especially with like Tia Portal, uh, that are not as intuitive as you are, when you are coming from like a more like software engineering C plus plus background. But I know maybe the latest version of Tia Portal would be quite interesting to see. But I only got like V14, which is fine for what I'm doing here home. Um, 
but yeah, it's expensive. Even like the for education software on eBay, it's not that common that you even be able to get and get something on eBay for that, and it already like costs five hundred euros, which is yeah, <laughs> quite expensive. So yeah, let's uh, refresh that update. Yes, and we have okay, and let's put. I need to update that one as well. How can I update you? Update interface. Okay. Yeah. Really nice. Output error. And then we have an output. Okay. Well, let's call it all okay. So we have now issues and all okay. Well, actually what we could do since I would see that a disconnect would also be an error. Let's actually add another network here and let's call this one error evaluation and in order to display an error we either have an error or we are not okay. I think a good a good idea to do it like that. So FB so either we have an error Or we are not okay. Then we have an error. I'm considering connection aboard as an error, not at the lowest level, but at the highest level. And now this one needs to update here as well. Shouldn't really change anything. Active com is still one, so that's all good. Maybe. I know if we do not have active com. Not quite sure. Maybe this is one thing that I do want to quickly add in here. So we have an error, and in order to have an error, active com needs to be active. If we don't have an active communication, we can't have an error. That's basically the idea. Right. So let's load the changes and reinitialize all data blocks. And now, do we establish a connection or do I have made something completely wrong? And probably I need to go back to stop and run to initialize it back again. Um, let's put it back to stop and run and yeah, okay. There it goes. Now it is running and if I go to tier portal, and I go online and I monitor my main OB. We have a fault. <laughs> nice. That's definitely what I want to have. I do want to have a fault now. Actually, I could. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, why do I have a fault? Let's see. Why do I have a fault? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We have active com and we have a error. Okay. Yeah, because what? But why do I have an error? Error is one. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. But why do you have an error? No, I don't have an error. It shouldn't be on, actually. Why do I have an error at a higher level? Oh, okay, interesting. So, mechanic, uh, ausbildung, and now computer engineering. Um, yeah, I'm gonna dive into C++ later as well. Uh, gotta basically write a a uh, Modbus server in or Modbus ma or Modbus uh, server. So I'm writing a slave, Modbus slave in C++ <laughs> later on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, C++ is. A nice thing. It's always working good together as far as I have. Uh, yes, I've used multiple times Modbus and C++. So, yeah. But, yeah. You can also go in and uh, learn it. And I actually see the issue that I've made here. It's the wrong 
one. I need to have the instance here. I've got the wrong error. I've got my own error here. But this should now, as soon as loading is done, remove my error. Now I have no longer an error. And as soon as I terminate here with Control C, I should get the error back. Yeah, now you can see I have an error. I don't have an error here, but I don't have OK as well, so I get the error now. And as soon as I put that back on, the error shot vanish. Yeah, the, the lamp is off. You can see the lamp, but I can see it. And you can see here we no longer have the error. OK, so this complements our, um, our Modbus communication. We might want to do later on a few things to make the Modbus a bit more uh, involving and make sure that Modbus is um, a bit more configurable, so the communication. Because currently, if I want to change something, I mean, it's fine to actually change it in here, so it's not that big of a deal. But ideally, you wouldn't want to have it like that in a PLC. But yeah. For now, I think this is fine, and uh, what I now want to do is I want to see that this works with my own C++ application. So, let's start writing C++ code. Um, is there something often that I um, don't want to show? I don't know. It's already too late now. I don't know what's still running. Is this Modbus thing still running? Okay, and close that. Okay. So, let's do C++ now. Let's see. I want to create a new repository on GitHub. I want to derivate this from MoxPP. I want to call that one. Actually, uh, how do I want to call that one? Uh, audio. I don't know. I have no idea. Audio coding. I can rename it always later. That's a bad name. Let's create a repository. Let's clone it then. So, let's go to dev. Um, yeah, let's put it in here because it's on... Um, the video. Let's clone it. So, let's open this with Visual Studio Code. There we go. And now we can configure our C++. Conan Fire. SPD log is always good for stuff like that. However, I need lip mod boss or how this is called. Let's see. If we find our lip mod boost. Come on, Conan. Is Conan offline? No, it's not. Ah, it tricked me in being on offline. I know, but the search is again cocked probably. I don't know why they updated it. It doesn't work well. It's... Ah, oh, come on. Hip. Modbus. Conan. Oh, probably it's not indexed. Of course it's not indexed. Why should it be indexed? Ah, come on. GitHub. Slash Conan. IO. Conan. Center index. And then we go to recipes, and as soon as I'm on recipes, I can actually search for libmodbus. Libmodbus here, and then we can find libmodbus, and I can go to config.yml, and I can see the version that I need. Yay! It It's not complicated. Ah, cool, good. I searched it, and it doesn't give me information. Nice. I, I hate the new Conan homepage. I Really, they need to fix it. It's It's awful. 
quiz. Um, it's awful. It, it's better currently to find details on GitHub than on the on the web page itself. And this is this is bad. <laughs> All right. So now we have lib modbus. This is everything that we need. I have no idea if we can configure something. Let's see. Let's go into the Conan file, because of course we do it, and we don't have options in here. Okay, good. All right, that's everything that we need. Uh, SPD log, no configuration yet. Now this is fixed as well. Sometimes this is bothering me. Um, audio, coding, debug release, yeah. In stories, we're gonna have actually a flat project. Uh, Audic, Audic for audio coding. Why not? Audio server is the product. Uh, let's audio server audio underscore server. Let's do it like that. Main project, and this is a console application that is completely correct. Um, and we don't depend on anything, so let's do it like that. And now we should be good to open a new terminal and do mocks in it here, yeah. Okay. Let modboss, emsys, oh my goodness, what is it doing? What, why does it need so much things? Emsys too, <laughs> Linux library. Okay. Now, oh, come on, now I need to... And download a buttload to my computer uh, and, uh, with bytes, but yeah. I haven't used slip Modbus on this PC. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, while I do uh, wait for that to install, I can show you my new latest fidget toy. Uh, yeah, well, of course, Nvidia Broadcast doesn't like my fidget toy, but it's a... Uh, 24 volt inductive sensor and it's really fun to play with stuff like that you can disassemble these things you can change how they work by twisting them around and stuff like that i love i love industrial automation definitely <laughs> i've ordered some cables for these so they are probably gonna come to use as well maybe i'm gonna do a follow-up video where i actually uh build them into something i've got two of them in original, uh, in original um, packaging, and they were quite cheap on eBay. I sometimes like new sensors, industrial grade. One of the most expensive things that you can get, and they are so cheap on eBay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do I actually load on my system? I load FMT, I load libmodbus, I load SPD log. Ah, that's good. Autoconf, automake, M4 and MSIS2. Ah, I don't know. Maybe they, they take some time. Let's see how long it takes to download all of these dependency loads on the system. And PLC is still red. I actually can look if it directly comes up again. Or if it needs some recovery time because a bit of recovery time was required, but it's actually quite stable. Issue has worked. Alright. Oh, come on. Decompressing, decompressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, while this is decompressing, I think I'm gonna quickly go and grab me some food. Um, we, we do still need to wait. It's just taking a few seconds. I'm gonna be back. I am back, and of course, uh, MSIS2 is not done yet. I got myself to fulfill all cliches when being a Bavarian. 
a Brezen. This is how we call them, not Pretzel or how you think. They are called Brezen, not Pretzel. Brezen, Brezen, Brezen. Uh, and they are tasty. They are good. While wait, I can can eat. <laughs> mm, come on. I can already modify my main. Just because it's fun. Mm, creating mod bus server. Slave. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Basically. And it takes ages, 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 ages. Hello. You're just decompressing a zip file. This should be faster. Apparently not. What is this MSIS 2? I think it's like a Linux, right? Linux in a box. Yeah, basically it's CG win, yeah. It's basically build tools for Windows to create Windows binaries that are kind of like Linux applications, basically like Linux in a system. Ah, yeah, there we go. Right, more update SPD log actually. One twelve or two is the latest version. And we need to rerun that, but it's not a problem. It's still like that. Mox PP is quite old now, and it doesn't have the latest version with it currently. Oh come on! What are you checking? Don't need to check so many things. <laughs> what the hell is it doing? Windsor 2! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, this is taking ages. Huh? Yes, we are compiling. Are we compiling? Are we? Are we? Yes, we are compiling. Finally. Finally. Mm -hmm. We have a problem. Why do we have a problem? Why is it not working? I mean, I changed a few things. Let's rerun that. But why did pre-make fail? Pre-make shouldn't fail. Why 
Why did three make fail? Project CPP console. Ah, because we are okay, we are flat. But I actually want to have single. Yeah, okay. Now it should work. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Let's start coding C++. I think we can now work with maybe ruining my whole microphone. Ah, let's maybe go for 200. Ah, 200. 250. 250 for the stream. Yeah, okay. All right, so now we should have a lip mod bus. Lip mod, 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 mod bus. Mod bus at age. There it is. <laughs> um... I do have no idea how this library works, actually. But we can find out. <laughs> I have used it previously. But... It's quite, quite some time ago. DRL GPL? Hmm. This is actually a reason why you should not use this library. Why do they release under such a Shitty license. I mean, you can... You can buy it if you're using it as a company. I mean... I'm probably not planning to distribute for today. It's, it's, it's okay. But you cannot, like, start with it, right? Oh, yeah. We can see. Modbus T pointer, Modbus Neo TCP. Slave. Neo TCP. And I want to start at here then I have it and then I need to call connect wait is it just a server Hmm. Wait. Ah, okay. So I have connect and I have listen. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. Why do I have maximum connections? Ok, 
Let's specify infinite. Let's see. Hmm. Naja. Can I not return to infinite? I know. Let's let's test it with ten and see. Why do I want to have? I don't like it. TCP PI. What is PI? The server library is bad. I don't like it, actually. Doesn't look good. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Why is it doing that? It's not nice. Hey, welcome to the stream. Error handling. Lip Modbus, I don't like it. Let's see. I can see your messages, yes. So they have written to slave 255. So I want to probably set this to that one. What? Mopos slave server. That's what I probably want to have. I need to play a bit of more around with that. Let's see. And then RC here for the return codes. What is RC? Smaller than zero error in receive. So if it's smaller than zero, we have a problem. Let's see. So the slave is initialized. Okay, it's by default on 255. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, backend probably here. The hardware abstraction layer. Mm 
if you want to use Squirrel, either you use a pre-compiled version or you need a package manager like Conan. If you have Conan, Conan you just add uh, Cool to the reference and everything is good. I have a template for that. It's basically what I'm using here as well. It's a template called uh, MoxPP. And you just modify the Conan file and a bit of the other things. There's a tutorial on this channel how you can use this template. And then instead of SPD log, you specify cool and then you have the library ready to use. Interesting, I got the... One hundred nine six. One hundred nine six. What is that in hexadecimal? C four. Can I translate these return values? Hmm. Str error. That's what I want to have. Okay, void mod boss call in RC const char pointer message equals that if RC equals or not equals zero SPD log error modbus error What is your problem? Okay. Let's do a modbus call. To make sure no I don't want to recompile come on let's see okay this is not an error yeah probably because Smaller than that, and then we have an error, so this is a normal message. Long time no seen. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. What, this is actually a socket that it returns? What the hell? This is a socket. Why is it doing such things? I can implement the Modbus protocol myself if the library doesn't help me with it. Why should I manage sockets on my own? Why do I use a library? No, 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 no. That's, we need to find a better library that does that better. Well, it's probably not going to be the case that I have one. If Conan works today, this is like the, the biggest concern.
I don't know why they updated their webpage. It doesn't work since then. Libmodbus, libmodbus, libmodbus. It's probably the only library that they have here. Yeah. Of course, yeah, it doesn't load. I mean, Modbus libraries could have a different name. Let's see. Do we have... But they are all... I don't care about iterators and stuff in libraries. I mean, I search for Modbus and they get back the list of all packages in on Conan. That's amazing. And the page is laggy. Oh, now it at least searches. That's the only thing that we have. Well, why why do they why do they need to troll me that hard? I hate it. Do I have a Modbus close? To close the socket? Just hopefully also closing the socket. Of course, Modbus closes void. No feedback if it was successful. Amazing. Uh, socket. It's always E4. <laughs> For maybe it's just an index. Would be good. Or does Winsocket has like default values that you always get? I would suspect that S is actually the socket. Mm. I don't look for Modbus mapping T, I look for Modbus T. That one. I know. I need to have a, a proper example of that and not just their gunk. Slave.c. Uh, creating a new mapping. TCP listen and then TCP accept. Modbus close and Modbus free. They are always doing that. And then I say Modbus. I can do, yeah. Quickly pipe that through there. Modbus, Modbus accept. TCP accept. CTX. And socket pointer. Modbus, okay. Yeah, let's... Let's use this receive and the query here. And then just print the query. Can I print a query? Printf. Then they are iterating. 
until n. Well, they're always doing 11 things. MB mapping. Because the mapping is 11 big or what? Is the mapping registered? No. The mapping is just... Like a table that accelerates over these queries. How can you complicate a Modbus master or a Modbus slave and Modbus server? How how hard do you uh, are you able to complicate this? The answer is yes. This should not hit. It actually should hit after a few seconds. Because the PLC is still trying to pull. Yeah, there we go. Is that the raw mod bus? Probably. Probably this. Okay, so I need these mappings, right? I need them. But how are they, how does these mappings work? For arrays of bits allocate for arrays of bits and registers. Bits, input bits, registers. Store bits, input bits, registers. Aha, uh -huh. but why do I need it? I would probably not need that actually. I don't care about these. Oh, come on. What was mapping T? Is that just. Yeah, I don't need these. Why do I need these? I want to have the Modbus query, but how do I interpret the Modbus query? That's the big question. How is the example doing it? So they are iterating, and then they are receiving. MB mapping. But how does that come together with the query? Tab register. The mapping is combined on the Modbus reply. Is Modbus reply writing into the mappings? Okay, interesting. So it's doing it in here, so I need mappings. Number of bits, input bits, register and input registers. So zero, zero, and then like uh, 200, right? That's That should, should match us. Modbus, uh, Modbus mapping T. But I would rather like to analyze the, the query actually. Because, I mean, yeah. 
I cannot really see what, what changed in a query, right? TCP accept. Ah, oh, this is not nice. No, that's actually not nice. Yes, uh, it seems like that. It seems like that using actual sockets would be would be easier. Like the Modbus protocol is like the most trivial thing that you can do, right? Like here, Modbus TCP header. If you're looking at the Modbus TCP header, probably there's somebody who has uh, that or has already done that. Modbus RTO, whatever that is. Where is the well, proper one that I was looking for? Um, is it that one actually, Sager? Like it's like transaction ID, protocol ID, length, address, and, and stuff. It's actually quite easy, the header. I have looked at this somewhere. Yeah, here, like transaction ID. It's probably that one here, HBB, RBB, yeah. Modbus TCP IP. Modbus TCP IP ADU. Transaction identifier. Protocol identifier. Length field. Unit ID. Function code data. It's like a PDU. PDU is like... Function code and data and checksum. Transitional Modbus is away because it's TCP. Um... Uh, let's guess what we're just doing it like that because I also don't like how they are how they are doing it uh, that's the wrong repo we are using sockets and since Conan is bitchy today just get up Azio. I am 128.1. I hate this library. I mean, I use it as a um, uh, as a master. As a master, it's actually quite easy to use it. You just say, hey, create myself a master, connect to the slave, and then it's it's super easy. But, yeah. And the license of the library is also a bitch, so... Let's use Arzio. Okay. Oh no, I have two solutions open. Yeah, that's not the best idea. So of course now all these Modbus calls don't work. But this is not a problem. So now we can use AGO. I need to get a bit back in on how ASIO works, but it's not that big of a deal, ASIO, IOs, IO context, CTX, then we can like do CTX, it's not pol, pol1, I think I just want to say like run and run runs forever until all ASIO operations are finished, actually, and between of that we are, we are doing stuff. ASIO TCP or ASIO IP TCP IP of course first let's maybe first create an address let's call this one the host address I'm um, quite sure and I think I want to do from string Auto host IP and then we can do a ASIO IP TCP endpoint host endpoint and maybe we don't even need to do it like that I think we can just do it and say address address is that and then we have port 502 and then the endpoint is configured 
And what we then want to do is um, make sure that we have a accept function so that we have a socket, ASIO, IP, TCP. Um, first, we want to have an acceptor. So we're going to create an acceptor from the host endpoint and the context thing that should work. Yeah, host acceptor. And what I want to have is I want to have a void on accept. I don't need to know the signature, but we're going to find it out. Because can like say uh, async accept. And then you basically provided a a functional pointer, but for that I need to consider the ASIO examples because I have not uh, used ASIO that often. Documentation, non-boost, who needs boost? Examples, tutorials, examples probably. And I think the most ones are in CPP 11. And what I want to have is, actually I want to just have an async TCP echo server. Oh, this is giving me the whole CPP file? Ah, amazing. Can I just open this without everything going rogue? Yeah, I can open this in Visual Studio. It's opening that in Visual Studio. It's okay, I would rather have it in, like to have it in code, but I think we could just like put this on here. Then we can like see how this works. So there's a session, uh, that's not what I care. I care about that one. Do accept, it's not something that I care for. What, did they do it in Lambda? They did. STD error code, what is an STD error code? I never seen an STD error code, is this a thing? That's a thing actually. There's an STD error code, nice. <laughs> I didn't know that there is a thing. All right, um, but yeah. So the next thing is the socket. So actually this is, yeah, let's dock this back. Azure IP TCP socket socket. Is, was that a reference or something? No, it was just a raw socket. And then they moved it, okay. And then additionally, what I want to have is, I think I want to have a reference to my acceptor. So I have my socket. I actually, like from the flow, I think I want to have my, yeah, let's, let's put it last. I hope we could, can we do that? That should probably not be an issue, right? Let's see. I'm not quite sure of SCD function and functional. This is always a bit of a, of a mess. Accept the reference host. So the host that's currently running that because later on I gonna call async accept again on the host. STD bind. But that's the same STD bind, so I'm rather later on copying that over. Or do I wanna have an acceptor pointer which is making things quite easier? With all reference wrappers and yeah, stuff that nobody likes. So placeholders. Then we should have host acceptor as a pointer. And this should, in theory, work for accepting. And I need the same thing here, but I am directly passing the host in here because it's already is a pointer. And this should now be the exact code that we need for handling that. Now what we would need to do is we need to create a session. Probably with that the socket would directly leak away. So we cannot do this statically. Yeah. How are they doing it, an example? I mean, it does work like that. 
TCP acceptor, right? The acceptor is like encapsulated in here in the server. It's 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 easy. Just create a server and it it runs. But I think we need to do the session because. Public std enable shared from this. What? What are these for? For for interesting examples. This is like the wrong example. I mean, I already downloaded that, but yeah, that's that's the, that's the one that I was looking for. So I have like the session. And if you're starting the session, it handles read. And handle read is then deleting itself. Yeah, okay. Yeah, probably we need to do this because we need some, some encapsulation for the session, for the socket here. So let's maybe... I mean, I think we could just, in theory, just say auto pointer socket or sock equals ASIO IP TCP socket. And then SD move this in here and just heap allocate that. Like that. That's probably, in this case, a bit easier. Void on um, on read. We would, but we wouldn't allow keep alive then, because we would close sockets. Maybe, maybe we want to write a proper session class later on, or maybe uh, yet. Yeah, let's let's keep it like that and don't support keep alive, and see how the SPS will react to that. Um, how does the read callback work? Handle read, error code and bytes transferred. Ah, so ASIO error code is like the... Let's do it, ASIO error code. That looks better for me. Error code EC ASIO. Nah, we're gonna write a proper session class. Um, multiple reasons for that. We also need a way to store our send and write buffer, so. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it like that. I am not caring about that. Like that. We're probably gonna later on have some code in here, so let's prepare that. And then what we're basically gonna do is we're gonna say just gonna say new session. And then this should be good. And the session is dispatched automatically here, and then we just need to to now handle read and write. So I'm gonna have a void on read. And this is now error code and then the size T R R R C V for receive length. Yeah let's do it RCV length EC I think this one has a operator bool so if EC Then we actually want to delete this. And else we're going to do some stuff. So if we have an error, we delete. Don't know if they have... If not error, they're doing it. And if they have an error, they delete it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, that could kind of like makes more sense to do it this way around, right? Okay. So, 
Um, of course, we need to dispatch the raid. Uh, so, socket. I'm not quite sure. Is it now this socket? Probably not. Yeah, let's make this a bit more. Socket. And then we say async. Async receive. I'm not quite sure. Or do I read some? Read some or... or um, I read some. Read some is what we want. Now the question is the protocol. Modbus function. How long is a Modbus telegram? Variable, vari <laughs> variable bytes. Okay, so and the maximum is uh, six five five three five. Is that is that six five five three five? How many k is that? So like sixty four k, right? What is the difference? Yeah, because yeah, I do. It's like sixty four k, right? Sixty four k. So let's create a buffer here on the heap as well. And then we can say like Azure buffer. I think this should should automatically be able to deduce that because yeah, you in sixty five thousand. That's already deduced because the length is encoded in the class. Um, boost bind. Yeah, okay. So we now need a proper bind. I know why they are always boost binding. And I think this ASIO stuff is also binding, but SED bind is our friend here. Session on read. This SED place holders one and two. Then this is bound. And as soon as we are reading, we basically read, then we accept, and then we need to read again. And in this case, public, yeah, let's make this private. And let's call this one void schedule read. Since we read multiple times, let's add the code in here. We could, for the live stream's sake, just inline this a bit so that it's easier to read. Like that. Schedule read. And everything that happens after reading is we are scheduling read again. Or actually, no, I'm not scheduling read here again because I first need to schedule a write and then on write I'm scheduling read so that we have like a ping pong going around. I don't know, can we... Yeah, we're gonna inspect the buffer, right? We're gonna make a breakpoint here and we're gonna see how this works. Let's maybe add a quick socket close in here. And let's see if this code compiler works. Probably not. But nobody knows. Oh, it works. And there we are, we already got the connection request. So you can see that the buffer has some data stored in it. So the first one is one. And one is probably the transaction ID. So starting with one kind of like makes sense, right? Transaction ID is the first. Okay, it's 16 bits. Is that always? Is, is Modbus completely 16 bits everywhere? Unit ID function code. No, it's not, but. Let's let's first design a proper header for that and then, then we can take a look at this. And it's gonna <laughs> Yeah, my PLC is blinking red. Uh like if we are taking a look at this now, how this looks from the PLC side. 
You can just... What is wrong? Reset the call environment. Uh, I think I know what's going on. Close all others. Come on, go, 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 go. Close and reopen this. You can see that it's like... See, like, okay, it's like, it's an on off, on off, on off, because we are currently the all time, um, um, all time, like, blinking around. Life is so sad without async await. Yeah. I, I mean, I like, I like the idea in general, because, like, these async await and stuff like that, these are things that, like, don't really fit into, like, I'm like thinking the C++ way of what async actually is and so like the concepts of Azure are actually quite intuitive, I think, if you have understand the concepts. So yeah, it always depends on how you how you look at these things. Pew. I love that they are always breaking on control C. Okay. Uh, now let's design a header for that. Do we need to do some translation in what is the what is the NDNS? What is the your NDNS, my dear friend Modbus? Uh, little. No. Big. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I see that on how they are counting it? Is a big NDN? Modbus NDNS. I have. <laughs> Let's see how I did this previously. Have I in this application swapped their NDNS? Oh, no, this was just some other code. Gateway thread. Did the gateway thread do the swapping? No, I think it's in the... Ah, it should be in the lib. In my nice little modbots master. And there should be a net tools. Or a util. Did I swap somewhere? Did I have myself swapping in this code? I have no idea. It's probably it's enslaved.cpp. This is some, some other Modbus implementation that I have done. Or is it in the MS connection? Master slave connection. It should not be in either of these. It should be rather like in something like net tools. I'm not quite sure if I required swapping, but I mean, I was on Windows and on Linux, so I did actually would need to have some swapping somewhere. And if it's not in the IP tools, then... And the net tools, it is inside of here somewhere. But the thing is, like, I had a process image. Is that in the IO handle then? Did the IO handle do the swapping? Get help. Get helper. The prob the thing is the get helper is probably doing the swapping, right? Uh where is my get hand help helper? Get helper. Yes! Swap Endian T. <laughs> there it is. Um M swap Endian. I think I am just gonna steal the swap Endian function and hard code this for now. I'm quite sure did I uh, on which platform I swapped. Um, yeah. I mean, there is this like net network to host function, these network to host functions and host to network functions, but <sighs> I don't know what I've done here actually. 
this has been hard coded to some Modbus compliant thing as far as I know. Because Modbus was doing some odd swapping. There was a thing I really had big problems when I've done that university project. We had really big problems with Modbus swapping. This is why there's like an, an hard coded UN 16T in there. I'm assuming this is also this, this function is definitely doing what it should do, at least for the lip Modbus things. Um, I'm just gonna play around and hope that it works actually. <laughs> um, yeah, let's define a struct. So, struct, uh, modbus, uh, how was that thing called, this packet unit? Um, that's like the header and the th whole thing has been called. It's a whole ADU, okay. PDU and ADU. This is an ADU and, oh, okay, MBAP is the header called. Modbus application protocol, MBAP. Struct. Modbus mbub. I mean, maybe you want to type dev uh, or using Modbus. Uh, how was it called? APU? RD, ADU. ADU equals to uint 8t 64 times that. So that we now have the ADU, the mbub. Then can we use the ADU down here? Uh, use it a bit simpler and then we have the mpub uh, mbub, and the mbub has tid pid so you in 16 t tid transaction id and pid for process id maybe yeah uh, i mean yeah documentation is uh is sometimes a thing sometimes it's not a thing today it's not a thing then we have the length field, so let's call this one length. The question is what this length is doing, is there a description on what length does? Length, this field is a count of the remaining fields and includes the destination. What? The field is a byte count of the remaining fields and includes the destination identifier and data fields. Destination identifiers, uh, where? Unit identifier. Probably this is the... I think it's probably that one, yeah. Unit identifier, and then we have the function. I think this is okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, how did they call it? Station ID, unit ID, UID. Yeah, <laughs> we can abuse a few more keywords. Right, so the first thing that I want to quickly see if can I just reinterpret my um, my my data in here without doing byte swapping? Probably not. Um, yeah, auto pointer. Let's see. Let's see what we got. The and break, please. Thank you. The UID is definitely correct. The length is if I... Mm, no, the length is probably not correct. This is too much. PID is zero, reserved for future use. That's correct. TID is some number that I probably would not be able to interpret and not to predict. Just the way it works. Actually, so yeah, am I actually halting the PLC if I am in here? Probably not. I should not halt the PLC. The PLC should should be should still be uh, operational. However, we should get while I'm doing that during the data exchange FB. I should get a busy right. Yeah, operation pending. We have two operations pending. And this is the state currently. Okay, that's that's expected. 
I should not be able to, with a breakpoint in code, halt my PLC. That's definitely not how it should be. If it would be, uh, I should go to my colleagues that currently work on a product here that I'm using and beat them up. <laughs> Why they are doing that. Uh, so, yeah. Probably I need any NS swap. So... I'm gonna write a function. Void read header. And void read header, or let's uh, modbus prefix this with modbus read header. And then we're gonna have a modbus, uh, modbus uh, adu. Uh, it's nice that it still has uh, reference to that. Uh, adu, and then we have the modbus mbap out the out value. So first thing first, we start with the TID, so the transaction identifier, and then we want to swap endian for UN16T, and as an input value, we need the actual value, let's say UN16T uh, pointer PIDU, that should work. And this should be, yeah, let's make this with auto conversion as well, like that. And then we have the value at ADU0, that should be swapped. And then we go at ADU1, which is the PID. And then we have the length at 2, two here. And then we have the UID, and the UID is at the normal offset, so this is now... Yeah, of course I've now referenced this from ADU. That's not how it should be. Uh, let's, let's maybe call this one P8. P8. This is the P16. Then we can go from the P16 pointer and the P16 pointer and the P16 pointer and this one is doesn't need swapping, but it goes from the P8 point and this would now be at offset, yeah, but it's times two, so it's at offset six, so zero, one. Um, so this two, three, four, five, six from the offset. So now we should be able to read the header. So header, so we have the buffer and as output the header, let's see how these values look now. I don't think that I'm going to get to audio programming in this live stream today, let's see. <laughs> uh, header, TID, PID, links is still... What? It probably has not swapped the end. It has it swapped the end on the LS. Length is a, I, I personally don't like the length, right? It's it's it, it seems way too long. But T I D P I D. So this is the TID. Now oh, come on. So we have the PID and then we have the length. TID, PID. I think it's just the length of six. Length of six would be totally fine, but... But the problem is, it's so not swapping it correctly. I think I actually do want to use the network functions. Do I have, does ASIO have network to ASIO H to H2S? What device I am programming? 
Um, I am trying to write currently a modbus slave slash server uh, that accepts. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Watch device. Yeah, multiple speakers. Uh, so audio devices. Um, uh, multiple speakers, and I want to do like um, define like like audio scenes, like where you can define like a backtrack background sound soundtracks and multiple channels where you can define effect channels, and they all get mixed together and mixed together depending on the configuration. And it's all controlled by a PLC, so I have kind of like a configuration file that I start on the computer, then it's like doing its its default job, and then the PLC at certain point can give like uh, status updates, like hey, now play that, now play that, now play that, and then the audio player on the PC shall shall react and play different audio. That's that's kind of like the idea. Host to network. Oh, I'm just using the. H-Town function. H2N. Where are you located? Winsock.h. Winsock2.h, <laughs> actually. Um, Winsock2. I mean, this swap endian was was a bad swap endian. I think the main problem with that swap endian function is that it actually um, didn't it was not targeting the Modbus protocol. It was actually targeting the device that I developed developed for that time. And that device back then was non-conformant to the Modbus standard, non which was not conformant though to the network to host standard and it was doing swapping differently though I think I wrote that function just for the sake of that project h2n It's a U short. What what is the U short currently? Short. I I hate short. These types are, but short should be sixteen bit. Eight sixteen, thirty two sixty four. Yeah. I think. Because Modbus is following the standard, it should, in this case, be actually sufficient. Let's see, let's see, let's see if we get the breakpoint hit. There we go. Header, yeah, now this is looking good. Now we have a transaction ID, a PID, a length, and a UID. This is looking good. This is exactly what I suspected it to do. Now, which basically means that we have a fight byte telegram. Yeah, and we are currently not deleting stuff. This is why we are currently skyrocketing with memory. Because I'm closing the socket, but I shouldn't close it. I really should, like, delete this here as well with Ezreo and then let Ezreo clear the socket. It should make my PLC blink again. Oh, I'm blinking quite fast. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, now the idea is that I now deconstruct this into packets. So let's say UN16T uh, payload length, or payload length equals header length minus one because it's like including this BPU there, right? This UID. And then we have function code and data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's okay. Okay, and now we have. Now we have uh, communication protocols. Yeah, now I, I do care about. Functions and registers. So we care about the code that follows. 
and to decode that, uh, to code, ha ha ha, um, let's do now a, a bit of offsetting for you int uh, offset, and the offset starts at size of modbus mbub header, offset needs to be smaller, actually, I would rather, ah, this is, now we do minus one, and I say, all right, so we, we're going to make this differently. We're going to start at a offset, and the offset is going to be size of um, Modbus. SCD vector. Explaining how SD vector works. SD vector basically is a dynamic array, but it's not uh, reallocating every time it updates. It starts with a certain size allocated. You can actually specify that size, and if you're exceeding it, it allocates in year one. And some compilers double the size, some of them. Um, I know there's a different allocation strategies on how you can expand a vector, but it's not allocating every time. It's not reallocating every time, though. No. So if I. Add the offset like that, then it should work. And then I say wire, actually I do a wire, offset, kleiner, uh, smaller. I offset, okay, let's say total. Actually, we have receive length. While offset smaller, receive length. The ship is efficient. However, it's not like it's not conforming to the standard. Let's 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 make a read length, and the read length is size of the modbus mbub minus one plus uh, header length, and then we should have the correct length. We can say read length. And now I've ruined everything because I missed clicked, uh, mistyped. Okay. And what I basically then do is I want to increment my offset of the current read length. Um, first of all, what I want to do have is my uh, opcode. The opcode comes from the current buffer's offset. Actually, I might want to rename my buffer to uh, our ADU, actually. Oh, I, I might not. I might just alias it for that one. Ah, no. Let's let's keep it like that. I can alias it down here because it's already called ADO here. So why not call it ADO here as well? ADO. 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 And then I can basically offset this, this every time I go in here, so something like that. And then I have my opcode. Let's see what the opcode is for my what my what the PLC tries to do. It should first try to read and then to write, but I don't know how they how the PLC's buffers internally write uh, work. Um, where is my opcode? I don't see my opcode. I don't like you, Azio. Where's my opcode? Thank you for not giving me my opcode. Opcode zero, then it should at least generate the instructions the proper way that I can inspect that. I'm in debug, why do you optimize? So my opcode is zero. Why is my opcode zero? What? Socket? No, ADU here. The opcode should be three actually. Size of Modbus. Ah, uh, yeah, because like that. No, I lost my breakpoint. Opcode is six, which means uh, where's my PDF? Six means what? Presetting a register. Read holding register. 
Huh? Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> How they are doing it. Okay. So how is that working now? We have a function code in the data. How does the okay, data for the functions work? Function code. Header, address, function code, start address, and number of registers. Okay. Um, I would, we would probably now need a big switch, right? Which function codes do I want to support? One, three, four, five, six. Let's maybe first start and um, and notify what opcodes I'm actually getting. So SPD log info god opcode. Then we want to get the opcode. And then I'll just let this run a bit and see which opcodes I'm going to try to get. It should be too different at least. Okay, there are a few opcodes that I'm actually getting. Uh, no, because I am actually uh, doing trash. I need to delete already in here. Okay, no, I, it would definitely not be a good idea. Um, I need to break out of that. Or I'm just getting garbage. Want to make my university uh, project? Uh, what networking projects you recommend using C++? If you're doing networking, always use Azure, what I'm using. It's for C++, Azure is the best library that you can, can use, in my opinion. Use Azure. Are there any existing ones to learn from? I don't know. I have learned this all with the Azure web page and they are giving you good information on what's happening and how it works and stuff. So, yeah. Just just, just try to maybe search GitHub, maybe you can find projects here, but uh, Azure has a, has, a, has a whole lot of examples available on, audio, on UDP and TCP network programming. And the thing is, like, if you're doing network programming, really the TCP and UDP doesn't matter anymore. It's like the, the application that works through that. Like, what does the actual data that you get mean? And as you can see, like, oh, this is not my code, but uh, here, Azure, you have a session class, you have a function and a few calls here to, to open a network connection. And you have the session class, which is also quite easy. And it works. It's it's actually quite easy to to use. And the only thing that is a bit, uh, no, it's actually not a problem. Like it's it's completely using SCD function, so you really have all options that you need. So yeah. All right. So what we are getting is six, is three and six as opcodes, and we basically getting read holding registers and preset single registers. I don't know why they call preset. They should be called write single register. So, what the hell? We would probably also get 16, actually. I, if we're later on increasing the numbers of things that we read, we will probably get 16, right? We can try it out, right? Um, let's, let a, let's leave the application running. So that you can see that this also, of course, now works in a loop. If you see now is an, an error, I'm currently like closing the connection, so it's not actually that nice. I know if the PLC should not have, I have an issue with that. But if I now read multiple, let's quickly go in and read multiple registers, read and write multiple. So let's create an array of vert from zero to one. Now you have, we have two words in here. Yeah, they are kind of like called in a bad way, but if I now 
read them like that. I would need to modify my block here and read two. And then we will probably get a different. So currently we got three and six, right? And if I now um, read this again, let's see. Do I get any issues when compiling? No. Um, if I now update all of these, I would probably need to go to stop and run again. Oh, I'm not scrolled to the bottom. Now, yeah, I can see now I'm getting 16. 3, 6, and now I'm getting 16 because I'm reading uh, or writing multiple. Hi, welcome to the stream. So, yeah, 3 and 16. 3, 6, and 16 are the things that we care. So, read holding registers, multiple. Set single. And set multiple. So three, six, and sixteen are the opcodes that we need, at least for the current project, need to support. Um, I'm currently uh, working on a um, on a multimedia application. Um, the multimedia is not in there currently, but the general idea is that I have a PLC that uh, communicates with my computer over Modbus, and um, the um, Modbus communication or the, mod, the, the values that are sent via Modbus then going to influence how the computer does multimedia. So basically, I want to control audio. I want to do a bit of audio programming, audio mixing, uh, maybe audio effects and stuff like that. Um, and this shall be controlled by a PLC. So the PLC is kind of like just sending a few status, um, a few status bits, and the status bits influence uh, the audio on the PC. That's the idea. And it also, of course, gets a bit of feedback from the computer back. And currently, I am trying to implement uh, Modbus on the computer. I had a bit of a problem using a Modbus library, so I'm currently implementing the Modbus protocol on myself. Because the Modbus protocol is easy and getting the library to work is harder than just implementing it on my own. It's really a pity, but that's, that's how it is. So, yeah. Uh, currently, I am basically... Uh, yeah, getting opcodes to work, and I now know that I need to uh, respond to certain opcodes. And so what I want to do is, I think, what was it? 3, 6, and 16, I think. These were the opcodes that were relevant. I have a PDF here. 3, 6, and 16 are the opcodes op that I am currently requiring to satisfy. And depending on what opcode there are, there is a different payload of data. So... That now depends on the on the protocols. And that's what I want to do now step by step. First, I'm going to go for 3, then 6, then 16. So if I scroll down here in the PDF that I found online, we're going to find the uh, data. Uh, JS for front end, yeah. In the back end, yeah, performance actually matters. If you are writing complete new software, you can define your own protocols. So you basically define your own format how data is transmitted. Can do that, but depends on how you want to do that. Okay, so now let's see how we implement that. So um, currently this is a read, reading of the registers, uh, of the holding registers. Um, okay, so address field, device address, we have that. Function code, we have that. Now start address start address and number of registers so first we need the start address okay and then the number of number of registers what why why four bytes four bytes can see like this is like response and request but we first need the the the, the two byte address right now of course i'm going to have problems with loops uh i love it uh, UN16T, um, this is called the offset. Or oh, no, no, not an offset, that's actually called the start address. And the start address, HTONS, 
T U D referenced. U R A U in 16 T pointer. And who is the 16 T pointer? Who is the 16 T pointer? The buffer at offset. ADU at offset. And if I read that. Actually, let's write a function for that void. Modbus ADU read. Modbus ADU P8. Then we have a. Now nah, let's let's not write make this as a template. Uh, U in 60 pointer offset. U in 16 T pointer values. So now we have a function that can read 16 bit values. And the general idea is that I'm going to say value equals dereferenced pointer 8 at position dereferenced offset. And this shall be interpreted as a new pointer. And this new pointer shall be a... Oh, come on, Visual Studio. Keep my formatting, please. Um, this shall be a UN 16 T pointer. Right, this is how it should work. And if I make brackets around... Uh, uh, yeah, the referenced value. Yes, you can ask me as many questions as you want, no problem. Plus equal to to read them, and of course, each terms need to be called in here so that it gets converted. Okay, so now we have the ADU read, and maybe I also want to have a ADU read for a 8 bit value just to have it completed so that everything goes to plan. So there we go. The referenced value equals uh, P8 at offset plus plus. This is simple. Okay, nah, not that simple, but the referenced offset plus plus. And then I can say ADU modbus. ADU read, ADU offset, and start address. Oh, come on. Start address. There we go. So we have the start address, and then we have the num registers. Start address and number of registers. Why? Why four bytes? Why is it four bytes? Why is it the offset? No, it's not the offset. One byte, one byte, number of registers. I think before I'm doing that, I want to first see how the header looks. I don't like it. Because if I am here, if I move the break in here, it's a bit better to do. Of course, I don't get a breakpoint here at the break. Come on! I want to see what value is in here. Do I really again need to zero that so that I get an extraction here? Get okay, break on without having to deal with this assembly. Alright. So, what is my start address? My start address is zero. Is it that? Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, this is like... I mean, it's it's actually, I think, okay that it is zero. Uh, because, all right, this is like here, that length opcode, then we want to have the opcode three. D 
debug rig, yeah. I mean, it would be possible. Yeah, thank you for the idea. Mm, yeah, debug break is probably a good idea. Three is read of registers. And then I have zero, zero for the start address. And then I have the number. What? What is actually my read length is 13. Um, well, my offset is here and then I'm starting at offset for my opcode, yeah. So the offset is, yeah, now currently it is uh, that value. So opcode, then I have my... As a YouTube video download a website where you type the YouTube video link, it will give you back YouTube. A video link to you using a slower version is very slow and I know how it works. Um, I, I don't know about like YouTube downloaders. I have no expertise on these. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always hard because it's all as, as, as simple as just downloading a YouTube video because there are multiple versions and you need to find a proper URL and then you need to download it. And the main consideration is most of the time actually your network speed for downloading than like the actual code. If you're downloading the actual video. But like the opcode I need to do a step through the, through this uh, a bit more graceful. So I start here with an offset of 10. So the offset is 10 because I have my ID. So I basically start here. Why do I start here? Should start here. Offset of seven. Thirteen is the read length. Something is not right. Like the opcode is three. Then we have the. Is this, is, these are two. These are two uh, values. These are two 16 bit values start address and num registers. This is definitely. Num registers two and start at risk zero. Read length, receive length. <laughs> that's something that's not correct. Um, minus one. This is the length in the header is not correct. The length in the header is six. So six is two. These two values for an opcode and the device address. Wait a minute, how big are you? 16, 16, are you padding that maybe? This is possible. Two, four, six. 
So it's actually 6 plus. Then this is a bit better. Because Win API doing stuff. And now these match together. Now these match together and I get my start address and I get my number of registers. So what I would now need to do is I would need to actually send data back. But for now, I'm going to do some SPD log here and I'm going to say read multiple registers. And then I say this to to this. And the calculations that I'm going to do is start address address and start address plus num registers and then I'm going to yeah, let's add num registers back in here as well n registers alright so now we get some information of course I need to break here I know why I removed it and this is what we want to do for all of these. And then we're going to tinker a bit around with the response. So function code 0, 3. The next one that I want to handle is... Or do I directly go for the response? Because I already have it, so it's convenient here. Hmm. I know. But one thing that, yeah, I think we're going to directly start with the um, the response. Now, one thing for the response, I actually want to have an ADU in and an ADU, uh, ADU out. Because I don't know if there's maybe multiple of them or multiple data fields in here or if it's not. Is this allowed that I have multiple? Probably not. Probably it's like just like one telegram, right? Just one telegram and I can reuse the ADU. Probably I can reuse that. The nice thing is if I can reuse the ADU, I can just uh, do it. Or, or do I want to have it properly? Hmm. I know. Nah, I know. I know. Let's write it properly. Modbus, write header. Modbus, uh, ADU, P8. And then we have that one. The header let's call this now in and now we just need to do the whole thing the other way around so p16 is okay but this is now coming from in and instead of h tons it's n to ha And this is not a pointer, right? Yeah. And we can make this const. That's the idea. So PID and offset one. The length at offset two. And then Unit ID. Okay. And in general, we just need to uh, change the length of the header and then we can just push this with the right header in. So the idea is we make SPD log here. Then we write the header to the ADU from our header. But before that, we do multiple more things. I think we even don't need that one. I think we can, since we're just gonna have one. I don't think that they have uh, have them packed. We can just do it like that, and this should be fine. And we can say offset is back to six because this is the length of the header. Operation code.
data bytes. We have multiple of these. Um, device address, operation code, number of sent bytes. Number of sent bytes. Video at offset plus plus equals num registers times two. Now I say four. Zero is smaller than num registers plus plus i. And then I can write the header and then I just need to send this. Send this with uh, socket async send adu async write not send. Now we need to make a new buffer and we need to bind this. Alright, just this times two. And then, of course, we don't want to delete that. Because now we are writing. But we need now to, now to delete these here. STD bind. On right, if not EC, then I want to schedule a read again as soon as I've written. Else, I want to delete this. As soon as we have written, if I, I'm not just not sure how the right callback is, async write, handle write. We just get an error code here, okay. So now a size. And I think I want to have a function called schedule, right? And the length goes here. Of course, I don't want to cut it here. Sketch it right with the calculations in here. The session on right. This is the place holders one. And this should work. No, no async. Async send. Okay. Okay, that should work. Now I write to the offset. And let's actually make the Let's first make the value h tons of 0x FFF to see some different value than 0 on the PLC. Oh, let's do some, some pattern here. This is better. Then I want to mem copy to my ADU. Add the offset from val. FT bytes. 
offset plus equal to. And actually, I think we can, we don't even need to compute that. We can just use the offset in here. And now we should be able to support three reading multiple registers. Let's see if this works. Hello, welcome to the stream. You can see that we are getting some reads. And I think actually that these reads are already correct because they are not fired as often as the uh, connections. And we shouldn't have an error here. If I monitor that, we don't have an error here because the reading works. But right should have an error currently. Well. I don't get requests. What's wrong? Probably the instance. Let's go, let's dive directly in it. Or now that the blinking is too fast, I can't see it here. Um, blinking is too fast. Um, However, no, the global one, that exchange, that one, I can go in here and I should get values here. No, why do I not get values? I would have expected that these values are actually in here. I don't get one. That's not good. Okay, so I, it doesn't work. I don't get values. Now this can have more issues. Why I don't get them? Either because Modboss or because Tia. Make a breakpoint here. Offset is 11. Okay, yeah, because mm -hmm. the offset, of course, is not a length. To make it a length, we need to add plus one. Is that solving the problem? Nobody knows. We're going to see. Okay, first of all, it's way faster. <laughs> Whatever that's the case. Why is it not there yet? <laughs> oh, what is the problem? Read multiple registers. Why are you firing the button? How does the buffer look like? These are data. One, two. Uh, something's not right. Should be up. Dot. Dot. Moment. One second. Function, opcode, then we should have length, ADU offset plus plus. What? Num 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 registers is two. Why do we not have a four in here? We're starting at an offset of six. I'm writing that in here, num registers times two. And incrementing that, post increment. So now it's it's filled up to here, 255. That's that's preset it. I'm overwriting. I'm overwriting something that I should not overwrite. Um, yeah, because an offset of six is wrong. I want to have an offset of seven. Because, yeah, offset of six, and then the device address. Yeah, okay. This could be the issue.
Let's see. How does the ADU look like? Four value, 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 value. And then gunk. That looks better. But I don't get values. What we can do is we can inspect. The Modbus connection because they no not the, the, the client one here. They had some temp data in there. So these are actually the Modbus datagrams that are in here. I would suspect. Is this opcode 6? Yeah, this is the, these are the Modbus datagrams that are in there. And I do get data sometimes. FA. So I get them in here actually. They were in the PLC. Yeah, there you go. FA was the data in the PLC. And maybe you need to make sure that I have the pointer written correctly. <sighs> okay. I might be not 100% sure if this is the right pointer. I need to find out how Tia works with pointers. Reference or the pointer. Da, 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 da. Let's see, let's see, let's see. How can I do a pointer? Ref. What sure can I do? Is the ref a thing in here? Is the ref a thing here? Let's see if the help system gives me some more information. Hello, welcome to the stream. Thank you for uh, watching the videos and being a fan. That should work. The arrays that I am accessing, they work. There should be already a pointer in here so no fur not to very here that's interesting so why are you or is, I think maybe something is wrong in my format hi welcome to the stream So, it's a problem with the protocol, I think. Hmm.
how does the response look like? Header type, address field, operation code. So it's still the same, yeah. Number of data bytes. Zero, zero to whatever. Hmm. Let's see, do I get a bit more references to the protocol? Maybe a better reference. Morticon seems promising. Oh my god. Ugh. Come on. Give me the relevant data. Read holding registers, yeah. Read coil status. Read input status. Read holding registers, okay. Slave address function, starting address low high, number of points low high. Okay, this is a way better document. So the response is um, byte, so, okay, you have a... Okay, they are always omitting the header, okay, okay. So slave address is the input and the output is slave address, function is three, function is three. With a byte count, then we have data low and high. Okay, this should be the right format. Why are you not accepting that? One thing that I've noticed is, should be better like that. Ugh. Mm, I'm doing uh, fine. How are you doing? A bit tired currently, but I need to write code. No time for being tired. It's not. It's not guiding here the values. Why not? What is the problem? Why is the values not getting in there? I think you should not have a problem, right? Status 7004 and 7002. These are good values. Ah, it's getting an error. Uh, sometimes. But I'm not able to catch the error code because it's too fast. Let's add some, some code to catch the error code if something goes wrong. And we want to have error acknowledge. Let's add error acknowledge in here. So that errors persist and I can find out what's going on. So let's add a new static. Error lock. Error lock. And then let's operate this error log. We need another input. Error arc for error acknowledge. And then we need to add a new network here. For error acknowledging. SR flip flop. No, actually, maybe let's for once use an, an RS flip-flop. That setting is actually dominant. So if we have hashtag error one or error two, we're gonna set 
the error lock resetting goes by error acknowledge and for requesting error lock is not allowed to be set okay that's that's simple but we need to update it Okay, I cannot update here. I need to remember that. Update interface. Now let's add a error ag. And let's add another output for acknowledge request. So error acknowledge goes in here. Error evaluation. Then we have error egg evaluation. And basically, error acknowledge is only gonna come up or egg rack is only gonna come up when we have a FB302 error. So if we really have an error because the other ones are for acknowledging. So we have now acknowledge request and acknowledge. Let's update it here. And I want to have this as the uh, as system on quickly p system on just some some lamps that I can see what's going on. Let's download the changes. And let's hope that we are gonna trip the error routine. And it's already not refreshing but I want to quickly go over stop and over run and let's now go into and see what we got we do not get anything but we are not getting communication either interesting So we are clocking it. We're probably somewhere in here. Do we have error lock on currently? So error lock is on. So but we are not getting an error in general, so maybe we wanna add error arc as well. No, not error arc, error lock in here. So if we have a lock, then we also ask for it. Let's download changes. Now we have an error and we have an error arc that is active. I want to quickly acknowledge the error on the system and hope that it starts transmitting. Okay. I have pressed the button a few times. It acknowledged and directly went into error again. Which is correct. And now the question is, what is the error status code? I hope that it kept it, actually. Not quite sure of that. Ah, oh, it has not kept the error, actually. Okay, so I am... I need to kind of, like, uh, allow the status to be saved as well. Okay. So I also need to save the status at the cycle where I have the error. So currently the status is not saved, so I need a, a output for the status. And this is going to be status 
what is uh, status rd and status re, uh, vr for right and they are i think words as well so now we have status rd and status right and as soon as the error log goes on I actually know I want to insert a network and we want to update date status RD so I want to update status RD so let's add a move in here and I want to move from my MB client instance one and I want to have the status from it to status RD and then I have the right network. And this is now from the two status right. Okay. So now I need to again update the interface here. Update call. As well, update the interface. And then I need to go to main and update that one. And now we can load and the PLC, reinitialize everything. And just to be 100% safe, go to stop and back to run. And then I can acknowledge the error again. Let's see. And it has the no new value. It has a new value because it updated once. No, it should not. Why do you have the the good the good code? Okay, so maybe we're gonna do it differently. How do I wanna do it? I wanna maybe check that it's not a seven thousand code. And rename the field. So this is no longer status, it's error. So really if we have some error code. And I wanna only enable them if I compare. Can I do bitwise operations? Comparing operators. Nah, that's not what I want. Not okay. Out range, in range, compare. Math operation. I want to have a logical. Logic. And. They cannot like move this along. Uh, but I could. Now I need a compare. I need a compare. Why is it not? Hmm. I need to see this error code. This is so important.
Hmm. Oh, ADA3. ADA3 is the code. AT. No, of course. ATA3 is not a thing. It's probably a protocol error. MB client ATA3. Let's see. Hmm. It's probably the wrong error. Let's see what happens if I acknowledge. ATA3 again. Not getting out of that error currently. Uh, let's go to stop and run again. Okay, now I'm on 7. Yeah, I'm back on normal operations, but ah, that's not good. I need to catch the actual error code as soon as let's maybe. Let's put error directly in here. Only if I have error, I move it. Maybe this helps. Let's see now. Ah, okay. Now I'm getting better information. 8380. Okay, receive Modbus frame has incorrect format or too few bytes were received. And this might be because of the. Of course, I have an update. Am I, am I sometimes an idiot? I think I haven't updated my header length. So the header length is 6 plus 1 plus. So 7 is like the header plus number of registers is 1 plus num registers times 2. This is the header length that I have not written. And if I add this, maybe this is correct then. So now we are on the slave. Okay, I have read it a few times, but I'm now again on a problem. The question is, where is my problem? 8380, ADC5. ADC5 is probably not a response. 8335. 8335 is not in here at all, but it's probably in the TCP one. Tia TCP eighty three five. I don't know. I should need to MB client eighty three five. But I don't care about that error code because that's um caring about that one, eighty three eighty. Uh, 8380 receive modbus frame has incorrect format or too few bytes were received now let's analyze the frame 
because it's stored in here actually somewhere. It's no, it's in here. There is like this this temporary. Okay. Why is there? Okay, no, this is some other data that's in here. That's not a frame. Hmm. Let's analyze the frame in 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 studio. Let's press acknowledge. Okay. Let's analyze the ADU. So zero ten transaction ID. Okay. Then we have reserved length is twelve. So seven eight. Um I have eight plus number of registers are two. Yeah, my may it's okay, it's twelve, that's correct. So the slave address opcode. Why do I have an opcode of four? I'm again having an offset problem. I need to offset at eight because the opcode op of coins also needs to match. And then it's also eight plus one. Let's see. Let's see if that fixes that. Okay, we have a break point here. Schedule right. Mm, ADU zero eleven year zero zero that length thirteen opcode three four values one. What? Oh, why 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 what what the hell? Why is there no value at 12? The total length is 13. H, R, A, B, C, D. Offset is at eight. Let's count this through. Two, two is four. Then we have the length six, seven, eight. So offset is eight. Then we are writing the value here, and then we are like at nine and 10, 11, 12, 13. This one should be filled. And actually, right, offset plus one, this is also a thing. Was it minus one? I'm a bit confused, completely confused currently. Uh, which value is my offset? My offset is at 13. Which means the 13 values are valid, no plus one, no plus one in at all. The only thing that I need to do here is I actually need to subtract again so that the header is valid because the header is not accounting for the first three. So this should make the deal. Right? Now it's it should be properly constructed. Let's see. Uh -huh. And my error is actually gone currently. I mean, I'm probably gonna get it back as soon as I get a timeout. But it looks kind of good. Zero, twelve, d d d d, seven. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the value is not set. Why is that well value at twelve not set? Does it need to be set? A it should be or well, is two hundred five actually just a value and I just got get hardly trolled. Probably two hundred five is the correct one that should go in here. Like A B What? Destination? I am feeling like a total idiot, apparently. Um, let's continue on. Uh, let's see quickly. What happens if I acknowledge the error? It's continuing to give me um, errors, which might be correct. No, I actually want to start debugging from here. All right. So now, offset is 8. The ADU has some gunk in it. Why is there some gunk in it? It shouldn't be that of a problem, actually. But it's not of a problem. The offset is 8, so it would start writing here. So the 255 and the 3 are, are correct. Length of 6, so that's actually correct, as I, I just thought that I thought there's a problem, but it's actually okay. So the next value that I would write is some value converted to network bytes. Now I would expect these two to change. No. This is the opcode, these two to change. Which is correct. Now let's expect these two to change. But it only changed one? Because the other one is... Okay, we. I need to debug this a bit differently. Man set. ADU. Zero. Just man set this quickly to zero so that I can. I hate editing continue. Oh, it, it, it succeeded actually. Now it, it completely zeroed it. Now we have written four. These two have been filled. These two have been filled. Okay, so this was. It's been done correctly. Even through, I don't understand the. I oh know it's actually correct to have the same value in here. I'm just an, sometimes an idiot. Now I would suspect the other bytes to get filled as well. So the header has been filled. Transaction ID. Length is 7 because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this seems actually all good. The only thing that's not good is actually the the opcode. We need to do it like that, then the opcode is, is in here as well. Do we uh, do we need to increment the transaction ID or something like that? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 
Interesting. Let's free wheel this application again. And let's see. Let's see what the PLC tells us. So the last read error was ATC4. ATC4. Okay, let's check if this is persistent. ATC4. ATC4. Sometimes you got to risk it all. Mm -hmm. Descent. Let's see, maybe ATC four. ATC4 is probably a general parameter, like from T send and T receive. Temporary communication error. Is that the right one? No, because there's no C5. Uh, ATC. Hmm. T U R C B. This is O D P. Temporary communication error. Remote partner has terminated the connection. Yeah, this is exactly, this is, these are the connection values that we are looking for because it's, I mean, this is UDP, but uh, they are probably the same to like TCP. Um, you can see the remote partner has terminated the connection, which is correct here because we are terminating our C4. It's not what we want. So let's cycle the PLC quickly. So now we are at zero and C5. This seems kind of legit. Let's see. We don't get any value now. Interesting. Do we get any value now? No, we don't. Because... What? I mean... We don't get an error value. This this would be actually amazing if we don't get an error value because this would mean that the values are in there. <laughs> I am checking why I don't get an error value. Uh, well, I don't get an error value now because 
Uh, well, the values are in here. The values are correct. We don't have an error currently. Uh, at least on reading. And now we just need to, to, to change this for writing. And now what I do want to remove is the error acknowledging bullshit. Uh, because I don't need it. Yeah, well, thank you for your uh, your chat, uh, Constantine. Uh, uh, yes, it's more or less how you how you work uh, how you how you work with like like any profession. If you are at a point where you um, where you have like not learning like the basics, you are like having something that you want to do and you play a bit around with it until it works, and you put in debugging stuff, you're throwing debugging stuff out, so. Yeah, that's that's kind of like how the how the idea is behind that all. Yeah, so more or less, so so professional professional work. So yeah, like I'm I'm not a 100% professional programmer though. I mean I have written applications that are used on a company, um, and I've also uh, yeah used like production ready uh, and written production ready software, but I have never uh, learned this or everything learned by by myself. But I would would consider this a more or less professional. So let's remove that error lock. And the error acknowledge. And then we should be good, right? Now we just need to change that. The interface, and this should give us a bit of a problem. Error egg and egg request can go. Egg request. Uh, update block call. So there we go. Now the error acknowledge stuff is out. Reinitialize. Put the PLC in stop mode. Put the PLC in run mode. And now it should hear spammy reading. And if I go in online, we still have system fault here. Blinking, yeah, we still have system fault blinking. Uh, we have system fault because uh, um, because we have error here in here in the Modbus data exchange. We have error. Because uh, this one should not have an error. Error 1 should be false. But error 2 should sometimes go through. And say connection closed, right? We should see it. Error read is all good. And here in error write, we have ATC5. And ATC5 means connection closed. And it, it kind of like cycles between connection pending, connection... Yeah, because basically what happens is that currently we are still in C++. They're just closing the connection here for 6 and 16. So we need to implement 6 and 16. And I think I want to start with 16 because it's more uh, required. So... Let's see... So first of all, if I terminate that one, we should get a solid error. ATC4. Now I'm getting ATC4 <laughs> for temporary communication error. And I have a solid, a solid error. Yeah. ATC6. Oh no, they are both at ATC6 because basically the connection is uh, closed. ATC6 is not a thing here. 
but it's probably here. 80. I don't care where 86 is not in here, I don't know, what is it? Ah, but I don't care. We're getting an error condition indicator, so... So let's just implement this. Or do we just start with... Maybe we start with... 6. Preset single register. So we have high, low, and then the data. So first the register address, and then the register data. So we're basically doing that. So reg address, reg value. Question is, do I need to acknowledge that I've done that, or is it just write single single register, and then we just have an equal, and then we have the reg address. And the rec value. Do I need a response for that? Response. It's an echo of the of the query. Okay, so we're just echoing out the data back. Um, so just like that. Don't need to change everything. Which means that this is now supported. This should not fix anything on the PLC side because uh, we are not using 6, we are using 16 currently. 11, 12, 15, 16. So start address and number of registers is the first thing. So basically that. Uh, wrong window. Uh, then we have a byte count and the byte count is the number of Bytes. Why do we have a byte count here? Yo, int ht byte count. Oh, come on, not structs. ADU offset byte count. I don't really care about the by count. The only thing I could assert that there, but yeah. And then I just want to get all the values. I smaller num registers. What is your problem? Oh no! Ha <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Then we just follow with all the data, right? Data high, low, data high, low. Data, okay. Then we can read the data. Data. And then I can do some SPD log. Info, read multiple registers. Oh, no, 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 right. Did I? Yeah, right. Write multiple registers, and then I had the register. Then I want to have here the plus equals that. So I basically have my 
start address, the i index, and the data value. Okay, what is the response? Please, just an echo. Well, it's not an echo, but it is without the data buffer. Okay. I can construct it. So opcode the number of registers. Yeah, no, if I start and then number of registers. I do not have an ADO write, right? No, I don't have ADO write. So, like that. Maybe I also want to have now an 8-bit write. Like that. Now I could replace them all by... ADU... Modbus ADO right ADO offset and opcode. Then I can write a bit easier. Modbus ADO right ADO offset and then I have the start address and the number of registers that I reflect. Right, start address, number of registers, and then I just need to write the header. Okay. And now all the features shall be implemented, probably, hopefully, I hope it is, hopefully. And my issue is completely gone on the PLC. The PLC does not show problems. And if we put the CPU to a stop, the PLC CPU to a stop, it should hopefully stop communicating. Yeah, it just stops communicating. You can see it, see, uh, it reads multiple registers from 0 to 2, two registers, and then it writes multiple registers at 100 plus 0, 100 plus 1, and sets them to 0. How can we uh, change that, that it's not setting them to 0? Let's go to the global DB, and let's uh, change the write value to go to F... A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. We're already getting that as in. E, F, F, E, D, C. F, E, D, C. 16 hashtag. Let's add these as initializing values. Let's download that. Let's put the CPU back to run. Let's monitor the DB. FEDC, ABCD, this is coming from the computer, from the Modbus, and FDABC should be set at, which is 65244. 65244, of course I'm in the wrong mode. Uh, programmer, 65244, FEDC. Yeah, that's the correct value that's uh, been uh, retransferred to the computer. So we're getting FEDC back, so it's all good. 
uh, hello, uh, what's going on? Yeah, I'm doing uh, Modbus programming currently. I want to write a multimedia system or multimedia engine on my computer where you can like define background, audio tracks, uh, sound effects and the layering and mixing between all of them. I want to define it with a very simple configuration file on the on the computer. I have this of course with multi-zone audio. So I have my like a sound card with six outputs to control six speakers and what I want to do is I want to um, change these by uh, a PLC. So the PLC sends uh, status information to the computer via Modbus and then um, the uh, the computer that is like running the, the client software uh, that's doing the audio stuff shall react to the data from the PLC. So what I've done is, yeah, written me a, a sh an example PLC application that writes FEDC to the computer and that reads some data from the computer via Modbus and it reads ABCD and it writes FEDC. FEDC is reflected here as um, here uh, decimal and not hexadecimal. And I am sending the other values in here from ABCD here and doing some network conversion and stuff in between with ASIO, uh, ASIO and yeah. Uh, quite some stuff going on here. <laughs> uh, did also take quite a while to work. But now I can see it, the data is transferred correctly. And if I close my application, the PLC uh, has a fault. So, uh, not a fault, but I have like my IOs here and I can monitor them. There is the P system fault, which is false. And if I stop my application here on Windows, because now Modbus is no longer serving that P system fault gets to true because its connection gets reset and there's a problem. So the PLC is directly seeing what's what's going on on the computer and that's a really nice thing that's going on here. But actually, yeah, <laughs> um, it was a good summary of the live stream of what I have done because I'm gonna end the stream for today. It was quite a long stream today, five hours. We did a few things. Many things take longer than it should have been taken, but. Yeah, that's how it is. Now, uh, thank you all for watching. And we're going to see us in you know, maybe next stream or video. Let's see what I've got time for working on.